Steve Massey on a Tuesday. It's a fast lane on 101 ESPN 201. Your time check brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. Got everybody in studio today. Yeah, First yeah. time in a while. Jamie, good to see you back, man. Yeah, it's good I to be back, boys. I'm so surprised. I didn't, I was trying to, I was getting your name. What's your name again, sir? How you doing? <laughs> hey, Gary, shut, nice your, you. shut your face. <laughs> you just shut your face, okay? That's, uh, that's Gary and Jamie. That's Marsh. That's Marshy. Yeah, my microphone. <laughs> just the way I left it. That's it, right. All jacked up. <laughs> yep. Well, okay, Ferrario knows better not to touch touch your mic. It's like gonna fall off the holder. Here. You should just hold it like the old school microphones, and uh, when the singers used to sing. Yeah. 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 With the chord. New York. Yeah. New York. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, back. Both of our cameras are off. Look at that. Your camera's off. My camera's off. I fixed it. It, Marshall's it's Marshall's all over it. And there it goes. It's going back. It's, it's got it's going to be Yeah, it's like in sync. <laughs> you guys are in sync it's right fading. now. I can see, these, I can see both the cameras just fading. Uh, hey, yeah. Over here. Unreal. Right, never mind. All right, Continue. so Jamie was, Jamie was in Boston last night as the Blues knock off the Bruins 5-1. to one. They score two in the first, <laughs> another two in the second. Got themselves a goal in the third period, Jamie. That was something that you had highlighted yesterday. Five-on-five five play. The Blues, not great. They still don't get a five-on-five five goal in the third period. Empty netter, though. You got an empty netter, and you got a 5-1 victory. And a lot of people are asking, okay, where's this effort on a consistent basis? I thought you said something yet, uh, something earlier in our pre-show meeting talking about how the Bruins played played well, despite the fact that they lost 5-1. to one. It wasn't like the Bruce, B- Bruins underestimated the Blues. It's just that they got worked, and they got worked by a team that had been struggling previously. Yeah, so it's, it's not like the Bruins played their best game ever but you know for people to insinuate that they didn't have a good game I was there I watched it with my own eyes I counted the scoring chances I counted the the offensive zone time of possession they had a pretty good game just the Blues got a little bit of luck I mean the first goal it goes off the Zamboni door (laughs) off the referee out to Kasperi Kapanen who buries it who hasn't scored in forever off the guy in the Top deck. Yeah. Pretty off much. His forehead. Pretty much. That's and an Larry Bird commercial. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so you start off the game like that, and then we know how the Blues are. When they score the first goal, they have a pretty good amount of success. So I, I just thought that the biggest difference for me was that the Blues got scoring from other guys last night. Not named Thomas, Buchnevich, or Cairo. Yeah. Of course, they got their power play goal, and of course, Thomas. You know, scored that one, but after that, you get three goals from essentially your third line to where it's Hayes, Saad, and Kapanen. And they played really well together. So that's the biggest thing for me is if you go back throughout the course of this season and let's say you get a little more scoring consistency from your second, third, or fourth line, things are probably looking a little different for you. Sure. Because you were so top heavy for a while. It was like Thomas, Booch, Cairo, or power play. If they don't score, well, we're screwed. Good luck. Or if Bennington doesn't pitch a shutout, then eh, it's going to mm-hmm. be a tough game. So that that was the biggest difference for me. So when I when I was watching, and this is what I was going to say in the in the in the room earlier, this team feels like if they score first, the energy levels are extremely high. Like there is a confidence and a belief because they trust their goalies. I don't know where that's coming from. It's loud, though. <laughs> I'll find it. I'll find There's something it. talking in the back. Like, what is, what's going on? Carrie's watching a movie. Uh, <laughs> if they score first and then score again, the the confidence level goes through the roof. It's like, well, we trust our... Why are you creeping around like that? Like, Because he's looking at my camera. <laughs> it's back against the wall. The camera's had a few wobbly pops today. Hey, Stay hot, everybody. Yeah. yeah. But no, if they if they score first, they their confidence is, is through the roof because they trust their goalies. They trust that they're those are the best players on the team, in my opinion, Bennington and, and Hofer. They have been pretty much. pretty much throughout the entire year. So if you are able to score first, you trust that these guys are not going to allow you to lose a game. But if you get scored on first, it's like, oh, man, our best players are, are giving up goals. What are we going to do? And it feels like that's the mindset. Yesterday, they played with the, the energy... The effort they were skating hard, you could actually, I think that's probably the most frustrating thing for me. When you can see the difference in how guys are skating and how much effort they have in comparison to games prior to last night. That, to me, that should never be questioned. Yeah. But, it, but at times right. it is. I think a lot of times, too, the effort looks poor because the execution isn't there. 
And, you know, if, if, to, if I drag it into the football realm of things, let's say everybody's working hard, you're trying, but your quarterback's just, he's not on his game with the mm -hmm. wide receivers. And every pass is just a little off or it gets dropped. Right? So the effort is there right. because those opportunities are sitting there for receptions or touchdowns, but the execution stinks. Yeah. And then it looks like, oh, what a horrible effort by the team. But not necessarily true. It's just that the execution wasn't as yes. good as it needed to be. And in hockey, the game is such a fluid game, not fast lane fluid, <laughs> uh, truly fluid, <laughs> to where there's motion at all times. Guys are moving all over the place. And if your execution isn't good offensively, if it isn't good defensively, it can look like you're not trying. Right. If you're in the wrong spot at the wrong time, it can look like he doesn't care. Yeah. No, he just made a mistake. He was actually maybe he was trying to work too hard to get mm -hmm. to a spot or he wasn't working smart. Yeah. So when it comes to these guys here, I, you know, being on this, what, eight or nine day road trip, you get to experience the highs and lows, not with these guys, because we're not playing on the ice with them, but you're around them enough to see their body language. And there was a heavy amount of frustration with this group. And there was a lot of guys that were wanting to work hard, wanting more, wanting to produce, but it wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. So the frustration grows and you end up with this push and pull kind of scenario to where you have certain guys that are pulling in one direction because they think that's the solution to the problems. You have another group of guys that are pulling in a different direction because they think their way is better. It's not that people aren't trying. It's just not a group effort that is going in the same direction. Right. And that's where the head coach and the coaching staff have to try to help. And they, they do. They try, they're the guys that are constantly reminding the team of what the systems are, you know, what the expectations are, and, and just how to execute properly or, you know, demanding the execution. But when it's not in sync, if it's not, like, done the right way, it can look bad. It can yeah. look like teams don't care when, in fact, that may not be completely accurate. Jamie. Joel Hofer stopped 36 to 37 shots in that victory last night. He was nearly perfect. He allowed just one goal. That was to David Pasternak early in the third period. Picked up his first win in over a month. The 23-year-old 0-3-0 in his last four appearances. He's got an 8 93 save percentage over that span. He's 11 11 and 0 on the season with a 915 save percentage and a 217 not sorry 279 goals against average. He's. I think the kid has played very well this year. Technically, though, what do you what do you see him? I, I like it a lot. He's a big dude. I think he's like six five. He uses his size effectively. He, he's he's not a busy goalie. Quiet in the crease, and he's, his rebound control is exceptional already at a young age. His puck handling skills are exceptional mm -hmm. as well. The best thing that happened for Joel Hofer, and the best thing that happened for Jordan Bennington, is being paired together. Because Joel Holfer doesn't have to step in with these crazy expectations of stealing games. <laughs> He's allowed to enter the NHL at the proper pace. And the Blues were able to shave some games off early in the season because Joel Holfer was learning. He was maybe you know, a little overwhelmed at times. So then Binner got thrown in a lot. Now, did it affect Binner? Yeah, it did. It was it was probably overworked at the time, but now it's paying off. Mm -hmm. Now you're seeing Jordan Bennington, who's getting a couple of nights off on this road trip out of five games, but uh, Hofer played two. You got like that, you know, your, your ratios are good. And now the team is confident in both guys. Last night, Joel Hofer made some saves, man, that were like, oh my, really solid saves. And that's huge for a team. You get a couple of big saves early in the game. Braden Shen gets a penalty in the first, I think his first shift of the game. And you had to go to work there. And that's tough for a goal. He hasn't felt any shots yet. The defense hasn't played. You end up with bad line combinations because your penalty killers are out there early in it. But I thought Joel Holfer and the way he played, it was able to calm things down for the rest of the team. And from there, you could just see them starting to gather some momentum, building their confidence. And Joel Hofer, he's been great. I, and I think that they're the perfect goaltending tandem. The Blues will take on the Kings pregame right here on 101 ESPN at 530. That's tomorrow. So Blues Kings pregame 530 right here on 101 ESPN. Today, we do have the West Coast Championship. It's a late tip off, but we will have the game <laughs> 8 o'clock tonight as Gonzaga takes on St. Mary's in that tournament championship. The winner, of course, will have the automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. A couple of finals from college basketball early today. You had Fordham beating Davidson in overtime 71-63 and UCF blowing out Oklahoma State 77-62. 
the right out of halftime, Notre Dame up 50 to 39 on a, on, a, on, a, on Georgia Tech. So the ACC Big 12 tournaments starting as well. Some of these smaller tournaments, of course, uh, wrapping up. And then you've got SLU taking on Rhode Island today at 3.30. That's going to be the start, first round of the A-10 championship. We'll keep an eye on all these games. We will be at Ballpark Village on Thursday. You can tackle your 3-1-4 day plans with the Battle Hawks this Thursday, March 14th at Ballpark Village. Celebrate all things STL with a free 3-1-4 day Battle Hawks Town Hall event with head coach Anthony Becht and the Battle Hawks Brass. This event, this event is completely free to attend. We'll feature fan favorite activities, ticket giveaways, exclusive merchandise, live music, and more. Plus, us, the Fastlane, will be broadcasting live from 2 to 6, courtesy of Sumner 1. Find all the details at 101 ES ESPN.com. Is it st- is it time to start the Victor Scott conversation? I mean, like really ramp it up with him breaking camp as your starting center fielder. What? We'll get to that next on 101 ESPN. If you're looking to save money on your car or your home insurance, please call Tracy Bibb and the Bibb Agency. With the Bibb Agency, you're going to get that personal attention from your agent that you deserve and that you require. Look, it's super stressful when something actually happens. And when you can't get a hold of your insurance agent to help you walk walk you through all the, the entire process, it's stressful. I know. I've had to deal with it. I had the old 1-800 number, call and talk to somebody else, and then they pass you on to someone different, and every time you got to explain what the situation is, stop that. Call the Bib Agency. They treat you like family over there, and it's not just the best rates that they're working to get you. They're making sure you're covered properly, and that's the one thing I found out when I switched over to the Bib Agency is I wasn't covered properly. I'm really lucky something bad didn't happen, but Tracy Bibb now takes great care of me and my family and makes sure that we're taken care of 24 hours a day by the Bibb Agency. And all you got to do to get that kind of customer service is call Tracy for a free non-committal quote at 314-328-4260. Again, that number is 314-328-4260. It's no fib. You're in good hands with Tracy Bibb. It's time to fly down to Florida for a spring training report on 101 
ESPN. Presented by ENB Granite. Brooke, Jamie, Curbs, and Bernie Federko's choice for countertops and cabinets. have a serious conversation about Victor Scott breaking camp with the Cardinals. Here is the center fielder today. Reached base four times in four plate appearances. He had a bunt single, a single up the middle, a single up the middle, and then he was hit by a pitch. Probably because he was he was red hot. So you got to send a message to the youngster, I think. Oh. Hit him. Hit him. I don't, I don't, in a spring not, training not, game, say, hey, we're going to take control of this game. I don't, I don't hate it. No? I don't okay. hate it. It's good for the young man. He'll battle through that. You should have charged him out. Yeah. He's probably. also. Yeah. Probably. He got called out. He's being you, tested. You set a standard as well. He's being mm. tested. They hit you. Charge well, you him do out. They just keep doing it. And they'll hit him again. Used to call yeah. that. You have to serve justice at that yeah. point. Absolutely. Even if you don't want to. <laughs> He's also advanced on a steal, a wild pitch, and scored twice. I would like to see this kid break camp with the Cardinals. It doesn't mean you can't send him down, but there's a there there are ve- many variables that have changed here since the start of spring training. The number one being the number one variable being that Tommy Edmond is not going to be ready, and we don't know when he's going to return after having well, surgery in the off season. You have a few things. You have Donovan that you can't play in the outfield yet because you don't know if you can throw the ball far enough yet. Sure. Oh. You have Lars that's out where he got hit by a car in the outfield. There he's got broken ribs and yep. something else that happens. Yeah, yep. Great. Which that. That's not going to be an easy one. I've had broken ribs. <laughs> Guess what? They still hurt me. Yeah. I slept too long breathe. on one side, and my ribs are jacked up. And it's like, this is 30 years later. Mm-hmm. Let, never mind trying to swing a baseball bat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the, the last part of it is Tommy Edmond out. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I, maybe one more is Dylan Carlson not wowing anybody. But there you go. So there are several variables that lead you to say, why wouldn't you give him a, uh, an opportunity? Defensively, yeah, but he'll start his clock, Anthony. Yeah, yeah. well, and, that, Who and, cares? and there's a, there's there's Cardinals fans that are saying that, say, hey, he won't break camp because they want to manipulate his service time. For what it's worth, the Cardinals have been have not been one of those teams. They have started the clock on young young players before. Now I know they sent down Jordan Walker last year, but there have been times where. The Cardinals have not have, have have had an opportunity to man, to manipulate service time, and they haven't. So, if you if you have a need, which the Cardinals do, and you have a player that is ascending, why not have him break camp with you? I'm all for it. I'm here for defense, yeah. speed. We I, don't know how he's going to adjust a big league pitching, but that was going to be the case even if he was projected to come up. Yeah. This season. I'm for it because of what you talked about in the outfield. And we continue to talk about the importance of defense. And and if our pitchers continue to give up a lot of hits, you're going to have to have fielders that can get the balls. Mm -hmm. It's just part of the game. And so I think it's going to be – I think it's good for him. I think it's good for the team. And I think if you have him in center field, it allows you to move Tommy Edmond back to second base, which is where I would love and prefer for him to play. I feel like he played center field out of necessity – because he was your best center fielder in terms of getting the balls. Maybe not the strongest arm, but he was going to be able to cover ground and get balls that were in those gaps. Victor Scott can do that as well. And maybe even better with a better arm, stronger arm, more arm talent. And you can put your gold glove second baseman back at second base, which makes your defense better all the way up the middle. It's not as good, and this is no knock against Nolan Gorman. This is no knock against Brendan Donovan, who has 18 gloves. He does a fantastic job. We love and appreciate what he's able to do. But Tommy Edmond is a better second baseman than those two. And if Victor Scott is a better center fielder, your defense up the middle is outstanding now. And you'll worry about, you know, uh, now left field, we still, we're still trying to figure that out. <laughs> well, I, I when, personally, Lars, when Lars does come back, I, I, Lars can play left field. Alec Burleson is hitting the ball when? well. When? Yeah. yeah. Alec Burleson is in the ball well. Stick him out there. No. Don't worry about it. No. Don't. Con- he, I don't need my plow horse in left field. He, he, he lost like 15 pounds. Put on, <laughs> you know, he, he's yeah. he's built up better than he was last year. Which, when you lose weight, you tend to run a little bit faster. So, Usually. a little bit less stress However, on your knees. You get to move a little bit better. So, these are all. And his swing. Hey, I'm yeah. not putting that guy anywhere have, in the outfield. I'm sorry. Yeah, I have no, no choice. Chance. I'm no with chance. Jamie. You so do have a choice. you're going to have a guy that is raking, sitting on the bench, just watching baseball. DH. He could DH. 
Then you're going to have Nolan Gorman as your DH because Tommy Edmond is going to be at second base. You play first base when Goldie needs a day. But that's that's down the road, though. You'd have Lars Newbar back at that point. If we're assuming in this scenario. And we're assuming that Lars is hitting the ball as well. Again, the, the I'd, rear, rather, I'd rather have Victor Scott in center and move Dylan Carlson over left field. Is he going to hit? Who cares? He can play defense. So then that's the problem that we are, you get one or the other, and that's the problem. That will be the problem with this team. You're either going to have great defense and guys that aren't hitting well at the plate, or you're going to have great guys hitting well at the plate and not so great but, defense. Which one is more but important? But, Kerry, we can still put Burleson in at DH. But if I, need, if, if I need Burleson's bat, that means the rest of the lineup isn't hitting either. Like, yeah. if I absolutely need his bat in the lineup, that means other guys aren't aren't pulling their weight. That that are my offensive horses. Yeah, that means Contreras, Arnado, Goldie, Goldie, Walker, Gorman. These guys are doing nothing right. at that point. And that's, that's an even no, that's bigger a, problem. That's a problem in yeah. itself. Yeah. Yeah. If those guys aren't, so you're if not going to win. On, exactly. If you're sitting there relying on Burleson instead of those guys, yeah. like that's where I'm like, eh. Yeah. I think you guys are slighting old Burley. Uh, I think he's Just fine offensively. He's, I think he's fine as a uh, in as, the outfield. I saw enough. I did too. My eyes are still bleeding from what I, I witnessed last year. I like I like I like offense. I don't know if you guys know that. I like I like guys that hit the ball hard, yeah. hit far. I saw I saw the, something to me. I saw well, the Dylan, Cardinals. Dylan <laughs> Carlson <laughs> doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, saw. I see it. Never mind. <laughs> uh, I saw the Cardinals punt punt defense a year ago for offense. It didn't work out overall. Especially uh, early on. I'd rather have this team be sound defensively. because the pitching was not up to par. True. It's not been great so far. I'm out, uh, where are we at? Matthew Libertor gave up, uh, had seven hits and five earned runs in four innings. Is anybody pitching well? No! Michaelis, Michaelis, Michaelis had one did, start. He did okay. One good start. They were they were like out of the starters or projected starters. Holy smokes! Everybody has had a yeah. a blow up moment. I mean, so everybody's two sporting. innings, four 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 hits, four runs. It's not good. The only person that I've seen that has stepped on the mound and came away with no <laughs> runs given up, uh, other than Matthew Libertor a few weeks ago, was Jamie when he threw out the first pitch. Yeah, <laughs> but that was months ago. I know. That's, that's during the regular season. Libby was a great guy. He was a lot bigger than I thought, actually. Sure. Got close. I'm like, geez, this guy's pretty big. Yeah. It's great. I was just giving you a compliment. Yeah, well, I appreciate stellar that. pitching. I appreciate because you're the only one that hadn't given up any hits no. for a while. You were gi- you're giving him a compliment yes. with a ricochet There's for the t- Cardinals. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you said it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, how you, it's how you interpret. No, it. you said it. Wait, no, you're I said welcome. something, and you Again. can interpret it how you want. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. God. You got to start it. So, Kerry, what what are what am I picking up here? What are you picking up on when it with you? Well, I, Why are you disgusted? I don't, because I don't this? know what to expect. Nobody Again, does. We can't predict the future. Well, you kind of you kind of can when you've seen it before. Like if you've seen something happen, you kind of know that that's a track record and that's who they are. Mm-hmm. The Cardinals and we talked about this yesterday, Jamie. I don't think Anthony cares too much about what they do in spring. Is that is that a fair assessment? Certain players I do. Certain players. Like Dylan Carlson, I care what he's doing in spring training. But Donovan, uh, you asked me about Donovan yesterday. Donovan, no. No. Matthew Libertor, do you care? Yes. Yes. He hasn't done enough to earn the pass That's where I'm at. Just like, think about when rookies, Uh, two, three, second, third year guys in the NFL, they're not the Joey Porters. Correct. Like, they haven't earned the right to kind of have a so-so training camp. Correct. I, I agree. I think, but... I also have a concern when you have veterans who are giving up as many hits as they are, as many earned runs as they are, when they were top five, some of them were top five in the in the league in hits allowed last year, and, and home runs and, and ERA. It's just, for me, that that's somewhat concerning. So how do you combat that? It, it, uh, some of those balls, it don't matter who you got in the outfield. You can have Alec Burleson out there, you can have Lars Newbar, or you can have Dylan Carlson. Some of them ain't going to be able to be caught. It's just, it's just physics. Like, mm-hmm. oh, no, won't catch that one. Well, the ones that touch seats are hard yeah, to catch. Yeah, regardless. Yeah. So, it does it matter? For the players. Yeah, yeah, the fans, you bring your glove, you got your souvenir, you're good to go. So, I just I just feel like it's, um, it's, it's which one is going to be more important when we get to the season? Is it, is it, is it the offense? Because you know maybe you're going to be scrapping and, and, and scraping and clawing trying to get back into games. The defense, are you going to be able to prevent runs from happening? I wish, I wish you didn't have that issue. I wish you had 
guys that you knew you could throw out there and they were going to be solid on both sides and, and it was no concern. But I think you have gaps on your team right now. You oh, yeah. got guys that play really well defensively, maybe not so well offensively. Then you got guys that uh, they're going to do well on the offensive side, but they're not going to do as well defensively. Right. That puts you in a, in a, in a tough predicament. Plus, plus they're banged up. I mean, well, yeah, that's we're it. having this conversation because Lars is hurt and Tommy Edmond is hurt. Brendan Donovan's coming off surgery. Th- that's why we're having this conversation. Are we all on board, though, with Victor Scott being your starting center fielder if everything holds up the same? If it stays the mm-hmm. course the way it is, yeah, yeah, of course. I'm why not? It. Yes, he's the best option, in my opinion, of the guys that are currently healthy. Well, there you go. <laughs> Done. We did it. Nice the job, best, guys. Yes, congratulations. I feel good about this. Now, it's still the Cardinals decision, not ours. But, um, you know, I feel good having the conversation. What's yeah, trending yeah. is next in the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. All right, boys, FanDuel, America's number one sports book. They've always got great things cooking over there. And right now with the NBA in particular, there's a lot of great stuff to bet on, so much fun. And new customers to FanDuel will get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. So, Kerry, it's real easy. Yeah. You get 200 bucks if you Let win. him explain oh, it. I was trying to cut him He's off. He's so excited. I'm, I, was, I mean, it's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Yeah. Who doesn't bucks? want that? That's easy. Please. Bet on the NBA with a wide range of bet types, including quick bets, live same game parlay, props, player props, and so much more. Anthony, it's easy. We all want to do that, right? Well, you just got to sign up, though, too. Oh, yeah, we all want to. Absolutely. With the promo code. So you look at, uh, you look at the NBA. Mm-hmm. You got the tournament starting up. So if you want to take advantage of the promo that Jamie just read to you, the new customers getting the $200 in bonus bets, visit FanDuel.com slash fast. Again, FanDuel.com slash fast. And then you can make your first bet a layup with FanDuel, the official sports sportsbook partner of the NBA. Must be 21 or older and present in Illinois. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet, Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Blues defeat the Boston Bruins 5 to 1 last night. They'll take on the LA Kings tomorrow. Pre-game starts at 5:30. Puck drop is at 6:30 and you can catch all the action right here on 101 ESPN. We'll talk with Joe Vitale later in the show in the 5 o'clock hour, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Once again, Blues Kings tomorrow night right here on 101 ESPN. The Cardinals are currently taking on the Red Sox right now. Victor Scott, who we just talked about, three for three, two runs scored. Alec Burleson, two for three with a home run. If you missed that conversation, make sure you go to 101ESPN.com or check out the free 101 mobile app. Just head to the podcast page. You'll find all of our interviews and full shows there. And it's all brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Tonight, we have the West Coast Championship College Hoops for you. Tip-off is at 8 o'clock. Listen to that right here on 101 ESPN. We have What's Trending coming up next right here in the Fast Lane. I'm Andrew Mar. And this Sports Center update is driven by Johnny Londoff. Find your roads and shop 24-7 at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? It's time to find out what's going on in the sports world with What's Trending Now. Brought to you by Goodwill. Donate a car and get tickets to the St. Louis Cardinals. Welcome back to the fast lane here on 101 ESPN with uh, child one, child two, and child three. I'm Andrew Marsh, and it's time for what's trending. What's so funny, gentlemen? A lot of truth to that. Jamie was just telling Carrie about uh, something that he he thought Carrie would like. Yeah. Ah. And Carrie so, agreed. So, yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. And then Anthony was dancing. Huh. Yeah. And we were smiling because mm-hmm. we're happy. It's, it's a rough. joyful day. The, yeah. the weather is yeah. nice outside. What more could you ask for? Blues won last night. Yeah. <laughs> the Cardinals thrilled. Cardinals are training. Yeah, they're winning. They're, they're winning? Now. Uh, for now. now. <laughs> <laughs> Still time. Yeah, 7-5. Uh, we four to one yesterday. No yeah, lead to save. That was but yesterday. It's a new day. It is a new day. Six and eight in spring training. They're not going to win the Grapefruit League this year, huh? Oh, no. Oh, good. We won it last year. Right? Yeah, it didn't, okay, it didn't okay. work out. Different mindset. Mm-hmm. They're trying new things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Guys, big news for me. Uh, got a quarterback? No, actually. Uh, we had a running shoot. back, though. Yeah, you did. Aaron Jones, yeah. baby. You got a QB, too, for your Vikings. Wow. Well, an old Minecraft head. You got Sam Darnold. You got Ooh, Aaron Jones. Uh, Justin Jefferson. Yeah. That is the makings of a pretty good offense. TJ yeah. Hawkinson. Good defense. Slow down. Jordan Addison. You got to have yeah. a quarterback. Marshy, how frustrating is it going to be when you have all these pieces in place and Sam Darnold th- throws three picks a game? Yeah. I don't know. I definitely won't be wearing a Sam Darnold shirt. I don't know if his head would fit on this uh, the shirt with Minecraft. Probably not. Um, they're going to draft like a quarterback. You're going to draft a quarterback. I know, but it's going to be J.J. McCarthy. No. Uh, or it might be. It might be. So, hey, J.J. McCarthy is the best quarterback in Michigan football history. Um, mm-hmm. Just ask Harbaugh. Uh, if you don't go by the results, it's true. Hmm. Uh, well, they won a national championship. Man. Elvis Durbach won a national championship, too. Oh, Elvis. Elvis is in the building. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Elvis Gerbach, that's your comeback? Hey, really? It wasn't even the quarterback? You could have said Brady. You no, said, how many other guys could he have picked? Uh, Brady Elvis didn't win the, a national Elvis championship. Elvis was the friggin' He Gerbach. was the quarterback when they won the national championship. <laughs> I mean, you could, you could put me under center. Charles Brian, Hudson was, was... Brian Greasy won a co-national championship, <laughs> didn't he? I think. Was Elvis Gerb- did Elvis Gerbach win? The- you don't know. You just I don't said know. It. You just I wanted said it with to say confidence. His name. You did. That's it why I'm like, Brian okay. Greasy. You I think it. Brian Greasy was the Elvis one that Gerbach, won the, the co. Oh, I mean, maybe Gerbach did. I don't, I don't know. know. Who knows? No. We're Gerbach. way off topic. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I have no idea who that is. Uh, <laughs> exactly, Marshall. Uh, yeah. Elvis. I hear Elvis. I think of the singer. I don't know if there's Elvis Andrews too, a uh, baseball player. Other than that, you know. Uh, let's see here. To me, there's only two Elvises that that currently live in the world. Uh, he won. He won a Super Bowl. Oh, maybe that's what it was. Who, who, who was he backing up for? <laughs> <In the booth. laughs> yeah, he was backing up for uh, Steve Young. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that guy. Yep, that guy. Hmm. Oh no, it, it, it might have been Brian Greasy. 
Sure. Just Possibly. you should have just stuck with it, Gary. I was if you would have just I left me care. alone. It didn't matter what you said. Yeah. I was not going to let I was you gonna go. Elvis Gerber. Yeah. yeah. You, you asked too many questions, and then I got unsure of myself. <laughs> <laughs> Well, like I said, the Vikings end up getting a, a running back. There's another team, though, that, that got a running back today that also actually has a good quarterback, and that would be the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, Derrick Henry mm. with the Ravens, two years, $16 million. I think that's going to be a nightmare for the opposition. Because Lamar can run that ball. They can design plays for Lamar to be running it, even though Derrick Henry's in the backfield, which would be confusing. But they also design, obviously, a whole bunch of plays for Derrick Henry to run the ball. That's going to be scary. It really is. I kind of like. I kind of like all the running back fits how about, thus far. How about the running back swaps? Mm-hmm. I don't understand. Some of them are all they're nothing but lateral moves. Like, hey, the Josh Jacobs <laughs> one confused me as yeah. well. Outside of he's he's a little bit younger. That's the only difference, in my opinion, because Aaron Jones and he had he was banged up a little bit last year. But Josh Jacobs was banged up. Was it last year? Didn't he get hurt last year or the year before? Ah, uh, last year. He last did. year he got yeah. hurt as well. So two years ago he, he led, led the, the league. league in rushing. Yeah. Um. So I don't I don't know, man. It, it's I guess it's just a matter of preference. Mm-hmm. But I do I do like the fits, and I do actually like and am am happy that running backs are, you know, getting signed and getting their opportunities because they are vital part of a lot of offenses and and you know yeah Anthony if you um you decide to run they the were. Ball, if the Baltimore Ravens decide to run the football they probably beat the Kansas City Chiefs but they said no we're going to throw the ball mm-hmm. And not run it and let our quarterback be the leading rusher in the game. I just like that they have uh, J.K. So J.K. Dobbins always hurt. Then it's like Gus Edwards. It's some combination of Gus Edwards. Uh, M- Mitchell did a great job, but then he gets hurt. Towards, yeah. uh, now you got Derrick Henry. Downhill running. Downhill running. Sign me up. It's a good compliment for what they want to do. I like the fit, too, for Saquon Barkley <laughs> going to Philadelphia. Minnesota needed a running back. You know that Aaron Jones is going to be fired up to face the Packers twice mm-hmm. a year. Mm-hmm. I like all the running back fits thus far. What about Austin Eckler and the Washington Commanders? That's fine, too. It's fascinating. Fine. Dan, I mean, Dan Quinn is is going to want to run the football. So he'll get plenty of opportunities. Although Austin Eckler wasn't wasn't a great, like, between-the-tackles runner for that. So I, th- I do lot. think they need maybe a compliment to him, too. He did a lot in the in the passing game and, and was able to, to – he, he did a lot. He did really well. Up until last year. Last year, yeah. when, when they got the new coordinator, it just wasn't the same. It wasn't the same fit for him. But I think they have Brian Robinson Jr. there still. They kind of get two, two of the same. I, Brian Robinson's not as explosive. Yeah, as... He's, he's going to be bored between the tackles, and Austin Eckler yeah. can be your and, – Antonio Gibson just left to go. I think you were the Patriots. Yeah, I think, I think. so. And so it's a lot of movement. Uh, Texans are trading for uh, Joe, Joe Mixon. Mixon. That's a good. That's a good fit Boy, for them. It, it, it goes to show you too. Since so Cincinnati, if they wind up trading T. Higgins, mm-hmm. it goes to show you how vital that window is when you're not paying the QB. Yes. Because as soon as you pay the QB, you think about it, they lost both their safeties last year. Jesse Bates went to Atlanta. Von Bell went to I believe Carolina. So they lost both of their starting safeties. This this off season, they had to trade Joe Mixon. Who he didn't, you know, he's kind of running that. that but they don't, he didn't have a great, he didn't have a great year last they year. They didn't use him a whole hell of a lot either, man. Though, Anthony. You got to give him the ball. But, you can't, but the bottom line is you can't pay him. You can't yeah. pay everybody because you're paying Joe Burrow and you're paying Jamar Chase. Jamar so Chase. Isn't T. Higgins Joe Burrow's buddy? Didn't they go? No. Jamar, Jamar Chase, Chase did. Jamar Chase. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Okay, yeah. sorry. My bad. I yeah, got them. At LSU. Yeah, that, I, I the thought to myself because last year, um, Jamar Chase was lipping off too. He said a few things about not getting the ball enough and mm-hmm. things like that. Like every wide receiver, I think there's a seven eleven, they're always open. Yeah, every, any number one wide receiver. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna bitch. They're, if they're not getting the ball. Mm. You can target them fifteen times and they're like, hey, what happened to the other fifteen times? I was open. You threw the ball thirty times. I'm always open. I got targeted fifteen of those. <laughs> I don't understand. Where are we at? What are we doing? Yeah. Guys, Matt Rempe, who we just saw the blues play against he plays with the Rangers last night. Uh, threw a pretty big hit with his uh, with his elbow. Uh, but NHL player safety will have a hearing today for the elbowing of uh, Jonas Siegenthaler. And uh, that was the same guy he hit about a week ago who got blown up. Yeah. So uh, not great for him and not great for Matt Rempe, who's been everywhere since he's been a Ranger. Yeah, so I got to see this guy firsthand when we played the Rangers in New York. And this guy's a problem. <laughs> He's a problem. He's 6'7". He gets around the ice real well. Like, he can skate. 
He's got a real good knack for timing the hits, for angling guys into bad areas so he can get the hit. And obviously he can back it up if you want to throw the gloves down. The problem is the youngster's a little confused right now. Is he's going out every game trying to have some kind of a massive impact. And when you do that, you start to operate outside the lines of the rules. Mm-hmm. And he's done it a couple of times now. And this one here, I think he's going to pay for it. I think that he's going to get two or three games for this. And he's going to have to start being more careful because the referees now are going to be watching him every single time. And he had a couple of borderline hits against the Blues where he's like, yeah. And some of the guys were actually, what, what I liked is guys knew, when he, guys knew when he was on the ice. Mm-hmm. And so then when he was coming close and they were aware and then they were getting ready and they were like, they were reverse hitting him at the same time to take away some of the impact because they were smart enough to know that, hey, this guy's running around here a little bit. Like, let's pay attention to what's going on. I, I like the kid's energy i like his willingness to engage physically the the madison square garden by the way which is an incredible spot i mean the world's most famous arena i absolutely love going into that barn matt they're chanting rempy and every time this guy touched the ice the volume of the building went up hmm. and he's played eight games i think maybe nine now with the last last night's or two nights ago mm-hmm. This kid is like owning New York City. He's just got to dial it back a little bit on the stupid stuff. Like last night after the hit, he gets Curtis McDermott wanted to fight him. He obviously was not in the mood to fight, or he's still nursing some of the black guys that he's got going on there. But he doesn't fight, and then he gives the, you know, the waving to him, like, bye-bye after he gets thrown out of the game. Like, okay, just dial it back. <laughs> just dial it back. Because what's going to happen is someone's going to really hurt him. Mm-hmm. Somebody like Curtis McDermott who doesn't really care. He's going to just wait when he's not even looking, just just smoke him. Yeah. You got to be careful. I was hoping Colton Pareko would fight him the other night in front of the crease. But Colton did a good job there, man. You know, oh, yeah, he did. I was just, that's my inner, like, I just wanted to yeah. see it. Well, I was actually really impressed with the aggressiveness of Pareko at that moment. Because once he stood there and he kind of bumped into Bennington, Pareko didn't hesitate. Grabbed him immediately and went, like, wasn't want to fight with him, but got him, like, 20 feet away from the net in a hurry. For me, that's just, that's good. If a guy's instincts are that way, then that's what you want. Yeah. Like, I've always said before, like, you know in a split second if a guy's going to fight or not. You know. Because you have to, as an individual, you have to make that decision. Yeah. In that moment, it's fight or flight. And when guys don't react right away in a way that's positive, you're like, okay, he's scared. Or he, he's not willing to do it. Or he doesn't have it in him. Yeah. Not when they're not that Colton Prank was going to drop the gloves with him. But he grabbed him and, you know, drove him right out of there. And then they did kind of get heated a little bit. And what Colton Pareko doesn't realize is that had they dropped the mitts, Colton Pareko would be just fine. Mm-hmm. Has 6'6", six, six with as strong and has, as big as he is. He's bigger physically than Rempe is. He's not taller, but he's bigger than he is. He could have handled just fine. I have no doubt Colton Pareko would have been just fine. That's Jamie Rivers, Kerry Davis, Andrew Marsh, and Anthony Seltzer. It's Fastlane on 101 ESPN. A lot of the, the national chatter today following the frenzy in the NFL, the free agent frenzy yesterday, is, is that... What, why would this team go with this quarterback over j- just trading for Justin Fields? And I think we're missing kind of a big component to that question. We'll tell you what that is next on 101 ESPN. Tires aren't exactly the most fun to purchase, but at r r Tire Express, they make it easy and they make it painless, especially when you're looking to go, you know, week to week or maybe on a monthly payment plan. Tax time means deal time for r r Tire Express. And what that means is they're going to match payments throughout the month of March. So when you pay one week, r r Tire Express, they pay one week on all new tire and wheel installs, again, now through the end of March. When you pay two weeks, r r Tire Express will pay two weeks. You get the idea. And r r Tire Express, they're great. They don't just, you order the tires and like, okay, we'll see you when it comes to the payment plans. Here you go. We're going to drop them off at your front door. Good luck putting them on. No, not at r r Tire Express. They offer flexible payment options, plus the peace of mind coverage that includes free tire installation, free rotations, free flat repair, and more. The best part, everyone's approved, no credit needed. So if you want new wheels, you need new tires, you can go to r r Tire Express 
uh, dot com, rnrtires dot com, I should say, rnrtires dot com, to request a quick quote while they're matching payments on all in stock tires and wheels at RNR Tire Express. You can also call at one eight three three Roll Now. Tell them Stalter sent you. Following the free agent fallout involving the quarterbacks yesterday, a lot of the narrative has been, well, why would you have, why wouldn't you just trade for Justin Fields? Why sign Kirk Cousins and overpay him when you just have Justin Fields? Why did you sign Gardner Minshew if you're the Raiders instead of just trading for Justin Fields? Why sign Sam Darnold if you're the Vikings without making an attempt to even call the Bears, even though they were in the same division, for Justin Fields? Why would the Giants go with for who they, they signed for a backup quarterback. They just signed him today. Do you remember, Marsh? Drew Locke. Drew Locke, thank you. Yeah, former Mizzou product, Drew Locke. Why go with Locke as opposed to trading for Justin Fields? There, there's a couple of key components here. One, any team that acquire, acquires Justin Fields has to figure out whether or not they want to pick up that fifth-year option. And if they're unsure if he could be a full-time starter, they don't want to pay him next year to go away. It's part of the issue right now with the Bears. Trying to figure out whether or not they should take Caleb Williams or another quarterback at number one 
as opposed to just going with Justin Fields. The other issue here, too, and this might be the bigger problem, he's not a fit for every offense. He's not a fit for Kevin O'Connell in Minnesota. He's not a fit for Zach Robinson now in Atlanta. They run similar offenses, which is why they're interested in Kirk Cousins. The Falcons, they run similar offenses to Kyle Shanahan and Sean McVay. What happened to Trey Lance? Yeah, didn't work. No, they they decided to go with Brock Purdy Where instead. He? He's, He's in, in Dallas. Dallas. Oh. They traded for him a year ago. It's like, why didn't he get shot? Right. Like He's at that in, point, yeah. why wouldn't somebody go knocking on that door? Yeah. Something's up there. I brought up the Eagles yesterday as a landing spot, and I think people are like, why, why the Eagles? They have a starter. I, I get that. Justin Fields should, should be starting somewhere, but he's a fit for that offense. Yeah. He's not going to be a fit for every offense. On top, Then on top of the fact, you got to pick up the fifth-year option on a quarterback that you don't know if he, if, he can even, if, if he can even ascend, if he can play. So his market has shrunk down to nothing. Which makes it difficult for the Bears because – where are you going to trade him, and what are you going to get in return? I don't, I don't see the Bears wanting to trade him and getting a fifth round, sixth round pick. Mm. If that's the case, maybe you keep him on the roster. But they're in a they're in a tough position right now because ideally, I think they would have liked to have gotten it done before all of the other pieces started moving, before Kirk Cousins, before Gardner Minshew, before all of these other quarterbacks found a home. Because when they, there's less places now, it's not a lot of teams that are looking it's like for. Nobody it, it's it, it, exactly. Nobody. And you know the Patriots are going to draft a quarterback. The the Commanders are more than likely going to draft a quarterback. So there are teams that are in need, but they're looking to draft a quarterback as opposed to going out. It may it may be something where you wait until you know the day of the draft, and maybe Marshy's Vikings who are unable to get. A J.J. McCarthy because he's already gone. I don't know why. Or a Michael <laughs> Penix Jr. who is also gone, which I would understand. Mm -hmm. And then you look at and say, okay, well, let's make a move there. But all in all, I just think it's um, it's it's a bad situation for the Bears to be in because it seems as though they want to move on and go with with Caleb Williams as the number one pick. But you're still going to have this guy on your roster, and you don't have anywhere to to send him to it for for a draft pick that you would want in return. So, did the Bears have to wait to trade Justin Fields? Like, when could they have started trading him? Because yeah. they totally screwed up then. Because whatever offers they had on the table, it took them forever to decide. At least it felt that way through the media. They couldn't figure out if they wanted to get the draft pick or keep Justin Fields, and the, you know, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then once they finally decided, it's like they drugged their feet on this. I think the Bears overplayed their hand. I think that they would have they thought they would have way bigger offers, way more offers, something they could really capitalize on. And that didn't really come. <laughs> and now it's gone. Mm. Now you're not getting squat. You're getting a fifth round pick, maybe a sixth round pick. Are we are Justin we Fields. are we sure that they have decided that they are absolutely moving on from from Justin Fields? Because yeah. the longer it takes, it almost feels like well, we're okay with him, and we got this first overall pick. Who wants it? Well, and what they can also, we get in return? They could also draft Caleb Williams, and he doesn't necessarily have to be the starter immediately. Yeah, I don't think you sit him behind Justin Fields to learn. Well, that, that, <laughs> that's more of that a, team isn't very. I would good, sit though. him behind Gardner Minshew before I sat him behind Justin but Fields. My in point the learning is that process. team's not very good, Kerry. Yeah. And the biggest problem that young quarterbacks have when they hit the NFL is they're drafted really high. Why is that? Because that team sucks. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then you go to that team that sucks, and you don't have the offensive line, or you don't have the weapons around you, and not only are you learning the playbook, not only are you learning the different looks from the defense, you're learning to do, play in the NFL. The, right. the pace is fast. I think there's value to having a young guy be the backup for at least half the season. Now, of course, you'd have to – do the Bears have to pick up his fifth-year option? They have to decide. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can't wait. They have to decide this season. Because he's in his fourth year. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, could, they could decide. play him in his fourth year and not pick up his fifth year. Correct. They could, yeah. So then goes back to what I said. Maybe maybe it's not a horrible idea to just go ahead right. and draft Caleb Williams, play it out with Justin Fields, let him go. Because mm -hmm. if your fifth or a sixth-round pick is what you're looking at, let him go. Right. You could just say, hey, one of you, one of you if, if you're the Bears, you could say, somebody's going to get desperate. Somebody's going to lose a starting quarterback. Yeah. Well, let's, let's just play this thing out. If if it, if the offer right now is a sixth round pick, like you're the Eagles, and you say, "Ah, we'll we'll get Justin Fields as a backup for a sixth round pick," we're not going to pick up the option to either. If you're the no. Bears, you say, "No, no, thank you. We'll keep him. He's going to be disgruntled. We're still going to take our franchise quarterback. 
Caleb Williams or whoever, I, and then roll. Yeah, but then I, at that point, I'd say, hey, Justin Fields, I know your, your feelings are hurt. Right. Why don't you do me a favor and go play really friggin' good so somebody So then I could trade you. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel Fly like the, the, style. Yes. the longer this plays out, the more it feels like they don't necessarily want to move on from him. Oof. And and you and that was my this, that was my thought to begin with. You had the first and I think the ninth overall pick is that were the second pick they have in the first round. Yes, one? first and the ninth. You know how much you can get? How much more? Do you? How much would New England give to jump and and and, and take that number one spot? Carry now the, the Bills if gone, they pat, I, I just I'm I'm the longer it plays out, the more it feels like you know we're good where we are. And you all are clamoring to get this number one pick. There is a haul. It's more of a haul to get than they will ever get for trading Justin. Yeah, uh, but for then Justin they're stuck Fields. with Justin Fields. Ah. They've oh, already Gary. passed on Mahomes. Oh, ah. If they pass on the next, oh, do, they, they, they essentially passed on, when they traded the number one pick last year, they essentially passed on C.J. Stroud. They've already passed on That's franchise true. quarterbacks. It, why would they want to keep a guy that no one else wants? What does that the say? The rest of the league is telling you exactly They're, what they think yes. of Justin Fields. I wouldn't be surprised. Which you know makes what? sense why the Bears They'll will keep, keep him. him. Yes, there, there you, go. you go. You beat me to it, Marsh. <laughs> you and I had the wheels spinning yep. at the same time. Mm-hmm. This Bears seems going to screw it up, let's be honest. Nah. Uh, the Blues, there's a, there's a key statistic. Not, not even a key statistic. Kind of an interesting stat. That might suggest the Blues are better off just investing fully in their offense. We'll tell you what that is next on 101 ESPN. I was looking at my lawn yesterday. In fact, well, really, when I was pulling away today, and I thought to myself, "Man, I already get a, I already have to mow my lawn." That's because I have Green Envy. Green Envy does a remarkable job of ensuring that my lawn looks great in the springtime. There are areas, though, because they're battling. Green Envy is battling Mother Nature when it comes to the the lawn. And now that the temperatures are starting to warm up, we're going to get more rain. There's a bunch of crabgrass and there's a bunch of weeds in certain areas, but. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have the time to worry about it. I don't want to invest in a bunch of uh, products that I don't even know is going gonna, is gonna to work. I've done that before, and I've wasted money. I've wasted time. But with Green Envy, they only use products that are formulated for Missouri soil. They only use products that are formulated for the weather conditions and the turf types here in, in Missouri. No national generic ineffective products. They've been in business in St. Louis for over a decade. They've serviced my lawn now for over 10 years. All I have to do is mow it. That's it. Mow and trim, and it looks great. And my neighbors starting to hop on the Green Envy train. I know Jamie's using Green Envy as well. Alex and... Uh, uh, BK, they're all over. Green Envy's fantastic. So give them a call at 636-757-1600. 636-757-1600. Tell them Stalter sent you. It's Green Envy.
Off of Lindholm, deflected it in off of Nick Letty. Perico going to get it right back. Kapanen with a goal and an assist in the game ahead to Hayes. Hayes cuts it into the middle. Hayes in the far circle, brings it back to Saab. He scores! This line getting it done tonight. Hayes with a goal, Kapanen a goal, and now Brandon Saad. It's 4-0 St. Louis, 4.35 to go in the second period. And they would go on to win 5-1 to one last night at TD Garden in yeah, Boston. The beat down in Boston. Yeah. Even when it's been a frustrating season, man, if they could just beat the wheels off of uh, the Bruins, I'm good with it. Saw big rig Pat Maroon last night. How's he doing? He's doing good. He'll be back in a couple weeks, play for the Bruins, and he's excited for the opportunity. I'm sure. got a good team there. and. So, Patty's doing real good. Good. So all the best to him. It's Fastlane on 101 ESPN. That's Jamie Rivers, Kerry Davis, and Anthony Stalter. 303, your time check is brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. So, the NHL Network tweeted tweeted this out. I think it was uh, earlier today. It was earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> and it made me laugh because I feel like every team is probably this way, but it's interesting nonetheless to look at. So record splits by goals scored. This is the Blues record when they score one goal, two goals, three goals, or four goals. If they score only one goal, uh, they're 3-12-1 this season. Well, yeah, most teams don't win when you don't score one. Well, no. Sure. If they score two goals, 4-11-1. And one. If they score three goals, and it's got to be like exactly three goals, they're five, two, and one. If they score four or more goals, the Blues are 21 and one. Wow. So just score four. So there just score go, four or more, and just you're good. Score four more. Again, I'm sure it's every team, game. every <laughs> team has is, is got sp- similar splits. But Marsh, Marsh pitched the, the thought of, well, should maybe they invest in their offense? I would say no. I would say that this this number is just a trend. It's fun to look at. But I still think the path to ultimate success is what we've been talking about, which is invest in your your goal suppression. And I, I'm not going to change just because they're 21-1-0 when they score four more goals. Again, I think half the league's like that. Yeah. You should All try right. to score four. <clears throat> more than half the league. So, Anthony, just for reference point here. Yeah. <laughs> the... Uh, Top teams in the NHL. Top one, two, three, and four. Colorado, Dallas, Vancouver, and Toronto. The top for, for goals. Their goals four per game. The highest one is 3.6. So the <laughs> thought of scoring four goals or more per game. Not realistic. Not even yeah. close. <laughs> no, no. Not even close. The Colorado Avalanche average 3.68. The Dallas Stars, 3.62. The Vancouver Canucks, 3.55. And the Maple Leafs at 3.53. Like, you're not averaging four goals a game. Nobody Mm -hmm. is. Obviously, nobody is. So, to poke holes into this thought, where the hell are you going to find a team that scores four goals per game or more? You're not. On a consistent basis. You're not. You're not. not. Even if you, even those that that are highly invested in their offense, like the Oilers, like the Maple Leafs, the Oilers aren't even on this list. There yet. you go. <laughs> like, think about that. The Oilers don't aren't even in the top four. It's a cute stat, but it doesn't tell you much about building a team. No, I, I'm, here's where I'm going to go back to with the Blues is this season in particular, they just haven't gotten the scoring from the depth of their team like they needed to. Uh, you know, when you got guys like, like Kevin Hayes has had long stretches of games to where he hasn't scored. Kasperi Kapanen had long stretches between goals scored. Braden Shen has had some struggles this year with big gaps between him scoring goals. That's your issue right there. It's not those players in particular. It's that that tier of player. And, and Brandon Saad had himself a little bit of a gap there for a while. But last night... You ended up with three goals from guys that were not on your first line, and they weren't power play goals, and you won the game 5-1. to one. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. And you don't have to get three goals per game from your depth scoring, but if you got a goal a game, it would be nice. Because if your top line can provide a goal a game, you're hopefully your power play a goal a game, then your depth a goal a game, that includes your blue line, that's three goals a game that you're averaging. That puts you right back in the mix to where you're winning more games than not, especially when you have Jordan Bennington and Joel Hofer. Sure. So that's where I think the biggest obstacle is for the Blues is between now and training camp next year, 
You know, and, and guys will have better seasons, too. It's, it's not to say that, you know, Brayton Chen doesn't bounce back in the last part of the season here and score seven or eight goals, get over 20 goals for the season. Ends up being a pretty good year for him. Kevin Hayes sitting at 12 goals right now. You know, Kasperi Kapanen, obviously, he's, he's had some tough luck. He's only got five goals right now. But you did get, you do have 12 goals from Torpchenko, mm -hmm. which I don't know if anybody saw that. You're hoping that he gets 10, but he gets 12 and maybe 15 before this thing is all said and done. I think 20 is a stretch for, for Alexi, but still, you know, that's what I'm talking about is between now and training camp next year, guys have to either bounce back or you have to find guys that can provide that next layer of offense. For right, you. yeah. I, I also think it's it's more difficult. Just just the idea. Forget, forget the statistics that we read off from the NHL Network. I also think it's, it's difficult to really invest fully in your offense. There's more, there's more spots to fill. You have more forwards. You want that depth. Even if you were like, ah, the fourth line is just going to be an identity line, we don't necessarily want to completely invest in a, an offensive fourth line because because most teams don't. Well, the salary cap. Right. It kind of runs interference for exactly, you there. Exactly. I, I just, you bring up the salary cap, which is which is a good point. Where where do you want to invest most of your cap? I think I think a lot of people say, well, you got to be balanced. I don't necessarily think that being balanced. Well, that's ultimately, be great to be balanced. It would be great, but how often yeah. are teams really balanced? Well, Vegas wasn't even balanced last. Exactly, year. they weren't. They had some good, you know, some good players up front, but nobody was even a big point getter last year. Right, they were just balanced from the standpoint of every single player played a two hundred foot game. Yeah, and you could get you could have one guy go on a bit of a scoring stretch. Uh -huh. That's what I think we overlook when it comes to offense. It's not like football. Mm -hmm. It's it. Your offense is your offense. If you're struggling, you're probably if you're not a good offense, you're probably not going to be an off, a good offense outside of one or two games per year where you just the the stars align. You're not streaky offensively in football. You could be streaky as a player in baseball. You could be streaky offensively in hockey. So I like what Vegas did last year when they built their team and they say we're it, we're going to be very difficult to score on. And it doesn't really matter who's in net because they had they had the, the kid Aiden Hill. Winning the cup for them last year it was their fifth goalie, I think, that season. Because you had oak trees <laughs> to use your to use your your uh, your point, Jamie. They had oak trees in front of them, and then give on the give on a given night, you could get, you know, a, a hot line for a week. I like that that model. I think just you, Jamie, you hit the nail on the head often. Just talking about the secondary scoring, it's hard to win when your second, third, and fourth line aren't adding anything offensively and your blue it's, line it, it, it's it's difficult right it's almost it's, it's similar to basketball when you don't get any bench scoring when your starters have to put up all of the points in your bench they're playing you know playing good minutes but they're not getting giving you any points off of the bench so if the the thomas line has to be the catalyst every single night and point and scoring points and, and being the the aggressors on the offensive end in the offensive zone it's hard to win the game and i think that's what you've been seeing from the blues captain and that was his first goal in 2024 if yeah. i'm not mistaken yeah no you're right the calendar year yep. <laughs> the calendar year yep. is the first goal kevin hayes has i think three goals in in the calendar year like it's that's tough to win games mm -hmm. and that, that's probably going to shine a light on part of part of the main reason why this team has struggled is because the secondary scoring has not been there from those guys. So, Anthony, we go back to the Vegas Golden Knights. You talk about a balanced team. Let's go back to last season. I think we've done this assignment before, but mm -hmm. just off the top of your head, Jack Eichel was their top scorer. Yeah. How many points do you think Jack Eichel had last year? 76. 66. Now, he only played 67 games. So would that have translated into 80 points for the sure. season? Probably pretty close. But your next top scorer for the Vegas Golden Knights was Chandler Stevenson with 65 points in 81 games. Mm -hmm. That's your top guys. Right. So, But the balance, you know, they had 57, 56, 54, 53. Like, it was balanced that way, and your defense core was obviously rock solid. So for the Blues to pull themselves out of, you know, the retool era, you're going to have to find some guys – that can add that balance for sure. Mm -hmm. You got to find another layer. What Vegas did was they solidified the goal suppression and just simply raised the floor of their offense yeah. as opposed to doing what like the Oilers and Maple Leafs have done. They continue to raise the ceiling of their offense, almost ignoring their goal sending and their goal suppression, and they lose every year for the same for, for, for the same reason. I, 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 Vegas did not have a high ceiling offensive, but they raised the floor. 
So they had multiple guys in that 50 to 70 point range. They didn't have disasters offensively where it's like, this guy can only do this. Yeah. I, I, I like what they did last year. And I think they had guys that... Easy to say they won the cup. Guys that aren't superstars who were playing at a superstar level, like Marsha Show. He's not a superstar in the NHL, but he won the Conn Smythe. Like, right. he was going. William Carlson. Like, they have guys that have it, but they're not necessarily superstars. And so, like, to your point, they can step up and raise... You know, what we said, they raised the floor. They've raised the, they raised the floor for right. their offense. And, like, a few of those guys, like, they, they've been in those situations before, whereas this Blues team, like, I don't think a lot of guys have really been in that situation, at least the guys that you need to step up. Right. Andrew Marsh, Gary Davis, Jamie Rivers, I'm Anthony Salter. It's the Fast Line on 101 ESPN. Based on what we've seen in spring, what team did the Cardinals profile to be in the future? Kind of an interesting question. We'll dive into that next on 101 ESPN. Anthony, as we get older, things change. It's just a way of life. It just happens, right? And you don't want to accept it sometimes, and sometimes you don't even know what's happening. And that was the case for me um, in my situation to where I was getting back into the gym and, and trying to lose weight, try to get that energy level back, and it was just it was, there was a sticking point for me. So I visited our friends over at Mentality, sat down with a board-certified physician, had a great talk, by the way, and by the time we were done, she had some ideas as to what could be going on. Well, they did a blood panel and found out that I was low in testosterone and deficient in other vitamins as well. Now that I'm on my program, I absolutely love it. I've got tons of energy. I'm getting better sleeps. I'm getting better workouts. I'm getting more stuff done during the day. I'm so glad I visited Mentality. I don't, and I don't know if, Jamie, if you were like me too, but I was chasing kind of the, the supplement craze. Uh, let, let me just let me just go out there. I'll do a bunch of research. I'll, I'll, oh. I'll spend a whole bunch of money on supplements. And you have no idea what actually works for you. Mm -hmm. you know. And again, if you're anything like me, you kind of take the shotgun approach. And it's like, oh, I'll just do this. I'll do that. Oh, I re read something else. I need this vitamin. Mentality actually takes your blood and says, this is what's going on with you. And then I realize, all right, I'm out of my depth here. Mentality takes over. They handle the program and they monitor it. So yeah, I know weekly. weekly, I know that they're taking my blood. They're, they're making sure nothing else is, is going on. They're making sure that, yeah, my testosterone is naturally raising. I've had the same success. High energy, feeling great. Workouts are great. I'm focused. I feel great overall just in, in both professionally and, and personally it's it's been great so you got to check them out go down to either chesterfield or south county tell them jamie or anthony sent you in or both of us uh or visit them at lotusa.com it's mentality
of what we've seen in spring, what team do the Cardinals profile to be in the future? It's a fast line on 101 ESPN. Kerry Davis, Jamie Rivers, Anthony Stalter. I, I think that when you look at maybe the offense, you can you can profile out a little bit of what the Cardinals can be in the future. You can't answer this question, though, overall, because we have no idea what the young pitchers are going to look like. When we say, what do they profile out to be? Like, what are we talking like, Are we trying to reference another team? Yeah, so, like, are they... The Orioles, for example, are a young, up-and-coming team. Now, they, they also had to do it in a different way. They were losing for a long time, and they drafted high, and they finally seen maybe the fruits of their labor. Or do they profile maybe more as a uh, a team that just you know goes goes all in on offense and then decides they'll fill in the gaps in free agency with pitching? The Cubs did that under Theo Epstein when he took over. He acquired Anthony Rizzo from the Padres, but then everybody else came through the draft. Chris Bryant, uh, either the draft or the international free or free agency. He he focused on offense, and then when he finally felt like he had the pieces, he went for John Lester. He paid for, uh, he traded for Jose Quintana. He went that route. We had those guys, Anthony. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, much later <laughs> than the Cubs did, but yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Quintana still Good pitched call. game one. He did, and he pitched very well. Yeah, he did. Don't remind Kerry. He, Please don't. He doesn't like that. What yeah. happened in that game? Uh, Analytics. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Anyways, what do you what do you guys think? Uh, honestly, based on based on not only what we're seeing in spring, but just the roster farm. You know, farm uh, I mean, system. this team could profile as the 2023 Texas Rangers. Oh, stop! What? Stop. He's being so oh, Okay, he's got the blade. There we go. Marsh, you got you ready? <sighs> that of course means that Carrie put on the Cardinals. As I look at the glasses. Roster and I see the young talent that we have, I see a team that resembles the twenty twenty three Texas Rangers. Do you know what they did last year? They won it all. That's what you can expect they from this Jordan Cardinal. Montgomery. <laughs> well, they, we could. He's still out there. That's a funny one. He's available. <laughs> I get where you're coming from. Their their, their best pitcher gets injured, yeah. misses the whole season. There you go. Don't, Marsh, don't and, encourage and, him. And, and, and they bond together to form a union and become the best versions of themselves. That's what we have yes. here. Bondage. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was synergy, but I guess it's bondage. I thought it was synergy too, but yeah, yeah no. Couple of those together. Bondage. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I see. It's the glasses. You see it. You see it really well when you have these. Mm, okay. Well, I certainly yeah. enjoy what you're seeing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the Cardinals profiling. Maybe. Like yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. It's the profile. Yeah, uh -huh. Certainly. Victor Scott. He's gonna be awesome. He's gonna be awesome. Mason Wynn. I, what I really see is I see a youth movement. I see younger players coming up, getting opportunities. Hopefully we see more athleticism. We see more running of the bases. We see more, you know, putting more pressure on pitching staffs. And when you get a runner on base that you don't know if he's going to take off, you at times you're, you, you may be more focused on who's on the, on the bases as opposed to who's at the plate, which you should be focusing on who's at the plate. And so I, I hope that with this youth movement, with some of these younger players coming up and having opportunities, you see more athleticism. You see more excitement. Mm -hmm. Marshy talks about it all the time. It, it, it's not. It cannot be fun to watch this Cardinals team be station to station mm. and not hit when when runners are in scoring position. Which is why I really truly love offense. But I also do love the defensive aspect of it. Guys making big plays in the field. But that comes with guys that can make that have range that are able to make those plays. Mason Wynn, I think, is going to be outstanding making plays in the hole and being able to throw guys out with his with with, with the cannon that he has. So. The youth movement for me is 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 finally here, in my opinion. I hope Victor Scott makes the team and he's here. But I think I think we are in that place now where we can see some of these younger guys stepping into to really big roles for this team. I think that's how you build a sustained winner. You you have guys that you draft and you develop, and then that's your that's your foundation. And you don't even you don't even have to draft them, but maybe they they come through your organization via trade, like one of the ones that the, that Mo, Mo made last year. That's really that should be your bedrock. I think where the Cardinals have gotten into trouble is they've reached for certain aspects, primarily offense, and they've given up guys that could now be the bedrock right in this in this current on this current roster. Sandy Alcantara and Zach Gallen, maybe Randy Rosarina. They his missteps along the way trying to reach for something that he thought he needed, that wound up being an issue. And I think now he's trying to show more patience. 
and let these young guys develop because he does like the farm system, but you have to hit on these dudes. And you know what? We could talk about Victor Scott, and we could, be ex- we could be excited about Victor Scott and Jordan Walker and Mason Wynn and some of these other young position players. If they don't hit on at least two, if not three of these young pitchers, it's not going to matter. And when I say hit, you have to have one ace out of that group. That's that's you have to have one ace. The, I don't you, know. You are true. You are Who profiles guy. to be an ace? Tinkins. Does he profile to be an ace, Anthony? There's a difference. Profi- between, I think he profiles to be an ace. Yes. There's a difference between like if you squint, he profiles to be an ace, sure. or hey, that guy's going to be an ace. Right. Like, who would you compare him to? A young guy in recent history. For the for the Cardinals or just, no, just overall? overall, he's a young, he's 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 very slight, but he's got a live arm. He's drawn comparisons to, and again, this is like the best of the best. But he's drawn comparisons to Pedro Martinez. Mm. <laughs> what about Tim? Uh, Tim oh Lincecum? yeah, you give it. You give you give me the the young. Lincecum was very he's, slight. He's Why this is going to be Pedro Martinez? Uh, Anthony boogie. said it. Three twenty four. Hey, Three twenty four. March Only 12, one of the greatest pitchers ever. This to is, play. He just said it. This is he said, year, are, you, are you writing this is it down? Year full. I, must, okay. I honestly Since didn't Pedro think you were going to go there. That's where he's drawn comparisons to. I thought you were going to pick one of the younger guys who's had some success. Oh, like, the greatest like, of the kid one of the, with the Braves? Spencer Strider. Spencer Strider. Spencer Strider. Like, I thought you were going to be like, oh, he can profile to be like that guy. Jamie. Well, that'd he be great. He's an overachiever. I didn't think you were going to give me a legend. Okay, well, if I said Spencer Strider, then everybody's expecting that he's he's going to be just – be great right away, and maybe he will. But Pedro Martinez wouldn't. He, did he ease into his career? It took him. Was at the Expos, baby. But yeah. Jamie's like, well, I really thought you're going to give me Spencer Strider. Spencer hmm. Strider's a, a a stud. He's right. a well, Pedro Martinez. Martinez is he can he to yes. be an ace. Pedro Martinez. Pedro Martinez is a legend. So we're going to go with him. I'd rather I did. Uh, never mind Spencer Strider. I'm going to go with a Hall of Famer. <laughs> Spencer Strider is above and beyond. We love it. And now we expect. I'm excited for if it doesn't a few happen, years from now. We're we're gonna be frustrated. Here. Yeah. How old is he? Hell, Three bring kids? him up now. If yeah. he profiles to be Pedro, okay. okay. September. All right. How old is he? <laughs> Screw you guys. <laughs> it doesn't matter. He's gonna be Pedro. Pedro came in at like 21. It was an ace. <laughs> Hell, I am looking forward to this. Thanks, Anthony. All right. He profiles to be. Uh, I don't know. It was a gas can. <laughs> <laughs> what? He profiles to be the next. Um, I can't even think of. Are you looking for horrible. bad pitchers? Yeah. No. I mean, we got. Well, never mind. No. <laughs> you stop that. What was the name you thought of? I mean, just never mind. Okay. <laughs> I didn't even want. I don't want him to be bad. I want him to be good, but I don't want to be expecting Pedro Martinez well, here. That's soon. the expectation, and it's been set, mm-hmm. and we're here. Yep. Three twenty-four. You. It they need an ace. There you go. This is the kid that profiles to be an ace. Let's cool do it. Files. What do you want me to say? He's not here yet. So what did Carlos Martinez? He profiled to be an ace. Well, Carlos, and he, Carlos sometimes, has issues. Sometimes Ish. other things factor into mm. Yeah. Well, those yeah. other things exist for other players, too. Well, you got to dial in. So, you do. Hey, when we look at... Uh, Get yourself a fall guy. <laughs> Get yourself a fall guy. <laughs> when we look at uh, teams that they could profile to be, I, I think of like the... Uh, and not like this year's version, but like a few years, the past few years, the Blue Jays, how they've incorporated their young players, and now they're somewhat of the stars now, like Biggio, and you have um, Bo Bichette, and, and Vladimir Guerrero Jr., like those type of guys. I wonder if the Cardinals can get to that level of team now they're not the best team by any means but they're competing every single year in a really good al east Mm -hmm. i mean that'd be great they have vlad they've got bull bichette they've got i mean they 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 found middle of the order bats and maybe maybe that's exactly what they're going to have in jordan walker and nolan gorman yeah i mean that would be that would be phenomenal mason win because since once once you have those guys you can spend on kevin gausman and you can spend Mm -hmm. on all these you know some of these other guys that the blue jays have added that again that would be fantastic that would be that would be the best have the foundation in place, then right. you can start adding. Mm-hmm. All right, it's fast on 101 ESPN. What do you got, Jamie? Go ahead. Not nothing, Pedro. 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 <laughs> you know what's going to happen? This kid's going to be a stud. And Jamie's going to be like, yeah, nobody had this guy as any good. <laughs> Don't worry, Anthony. I wrote it down. Thank you. Yeah. Like my better. What's that? What? 
Are you sold is next. If you have an are you sold, 314-399-9646. I don't want to hear anybody saying I'm negative, by the way, on the Cardinals either from That's here on out. Positive state Delusion. Thank you. Yeah. Delusion. Naive. All goes in the same basket. Are you sold next? I want to win ESPN. If you need a new car, you got to head down Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum. They have over 700 vehicles, and it's all in one location. So you can start at AutoCenter'sNissan.com, and then you can head down to Herculaneum and test drive vehicles that suit you. In fact, they've got new Nissan Altimas up to $4,000 off MSRP. You can finance for only $4.99 down and $4.99 a month for 84 months. They've got great financing options for everyone, whether you have good credit or bad credit. It doesn't matter at Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum. They're going to make sure that they're taking care of you. Yeah. That offer on the new Nissan also includes a 30-day new car return promise. What this is, is that they promise that you're going to love the vehicle. If you don't, within 30 days, you can bring it back and they'll refund the price for you. Complimentary lifetime warranty, complimentary one-year maintenance as well, gives you peace of mind knowing that you're taken care of with that vehicle as soon as you drive off the lot. You could service it right there at Auto Center's Nissan Herculaneum. They got the best service department that you're going to find at any dealership. So head out to Herculaneum or again, check them out online first at AutoCenter'sNissan.com. Tell them Stalter sent you.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Blues defeated the Boston Bruins last night by a final score of 5 to 1. They'll take on the LA Kings tomorrow. Pre-game starts at 5:30. Puck drop is at 6:30, and you can catch all the action right here on 101 ESPN. We'll talk with Joe Vitale in the 5 o'clock hour, so make sure you stay tuned for that. The Cardinals defeated the Boston Red Sox today in spring training, 8 to 6. Victor Scott went 3 for 3, two runs scored. Alec Burleson and two for three with a home run. Matthew Libertor pitched four innings, gave up seven hits, five earned runs, and he struck out five. Tonight, we'll have the West Coast Championship for you. College hoops tip-off is at eight. But coming up next, we have Are You Sold? So if you have an Are You Sold statement you want to send to us, do so using the Air Comfort Service text line 314-399-9646. Are You Sold? Coming up next. I'm Andrew Marsh, and the Sports Center update is brought to you by Saliga. Heating and cooling. Independent, independent American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning Dealer. Sold here in the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN with Kerry Davis, Jamie Rivers, I'm Anthony Stalter, Andrew Marsh. Take over. All right, this one comes from Hockey Bob. Oh, Are baby. you sold that the Blues can win 15 of their last 17 games and end up with 99 points? No. Are you? Are you a bunch of quitters? Uh, I'm not so. I'm not a quitter. But I'm not so. But I'm not so. Hang on, guys. Hang on. You haven't even heard the schedule yet. 15. Okay. Go ahead. What you okay. Got? So let's go through this quickly. Kings. Winnable. Didn't say they'll win. It's a winnable game. The Wild, winnable. Ducks, winnable. Avalanche, not winnable. Let's just play that category. Then. Mm, sure. Okay. Senators, winnable. Minnesota, winnable. So now we're up to one, two, three, four, five wins. Then you got the Vegas Golden Knights. Let's say that's not a winnable game right now. Right. Let's just say it isn't. All right. Calgary after that, winnable. San Jose after that, winnable. Like, there's a lot of games here. Hang on. The April, Edmonton. Yeah, all right. Nashville. <laughs> I still think I still think that Nashville's a winnable game. San Jose again, winnable. Ducks again, winnable. Blackhawks, winnable. Hurricanes, tough game. Kraken, winnable. So that's a lot of games that are winnable. What was the number? Sounds like they're only losing three more games. Yeah. However, I believe it was the uh, uh, 15 out of 17. 15 out of 17. Okay, so then I guess it's I guess I'm not sold on 15. It'll be like 13 out of 17. It's still possible good. though. And, and make it to the playoffs? No, that might be still be <laughs> okay. They might have to win out to get there. No. That's tough. Because Vegas is going to have something to say about that, and so is Nashville and L.A. They're going to continue to play pretty good hockey. I'm just saying the schedule sets up. To, here's what sucks about it, honestly, to be perfectly clear. <laughs> no, here's what sucks, is if you don't have if you don't have that stretch where you're losing three or four in a row, mm-hmm. and you have this team-friendly schedule coming up, like it makes things makes things a lot better. Yeah, Jamie, I could be wrong, probably. But when I watch Anthony's face, I mean, maybe you should, you, not this time. When I see Anthony's face and you speak about all these wins, it kind of feels like how you felt about Pedro Martinez and Ten Kent. No, that that was way worse. I, well, well, looking at his face, I don't I don't know that that's He's much just worse. Get me back. Okay. Anthony does that. He just. I, I mean, I was looking at him the whole time you were running off those those wins, and he was he was not sold. I can uh, yes, I believe can, enough. <laughs> I because be, belief is what you need. I can be <laughs> a hell with everything. Anthony else. blamed the entire fan base for not believing enough one time. Mm. That's because they're blaming us for not for, for the Blues not getting Matthew Kachuk and the Cardinals got not getting Juan Soto. Like if you're gonna blame believe. us, I I could get a little crazy I didn't too. Believe. Uh, we got a text from Anthony. I'm, uh, I mean, the 314. Jamie is so delusional. This team is trash and super inconsistent. Yeah, they're all winnable. If you're a good team, the Blues are not. Oh. Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and you're welcome to it, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I just I mean, there's some winnable games here. Quite a few winnable. Doesn't mean they're going to win. I didn't say that's a win. I didn't guarantee a victory. I it's said winnable. That it's a winnable game. Hmm. Hmm. Now you got to go out there and win it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of winning a bowl game, uh, from the 618, does Kirk make Atlanta a Super Bowl contender? No. no. It makes uh, – what? 
Yes, we are. The <laughs> <laughs> they signed a good quarterback, and Kerry is like, I we played for that Kerry. team. Yeah. Yeah. The former Falcon? <laughs> yeah, Kerry. We are. Okay. Super I... Bowl. Anthony, you're going to get on this train, and we're going to ride let's... to the Super Bowl All right. and do the Dirty Bird. I can see you guys doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Carrie, <laughs> while your your form is impeccable on the Dirty Bird, uh, if you are going to hop on board here yeah. as a former Falcon player, yeah. and now you're all in on the Falcons, which I appreciate because we do need plenty, I, you know? Um, the jerseys at home. I'm going to wear one. You know how I hopped on the Chiefs bandwagon, yeah. and they threw they threw a chain basically around my neck and yeah. dragged me? <laughs> they, they like, did. here, the bandwagon's full, but we'll yeah. allow you to do this, and I was just kind of, like, <laughs> bouncing hey, around. Know. The Falcons fan, like we, we, we have plenty of room, comfortable seating. Yeah. Um, you can set any actually where you want. We've got drinks. We've <laughs> Lots got, of seats yeah. available. Yeah. Drive the yeah. Damn thing. So we, we help. <laughs> we, we, we're glad that you're here. But if you are truly going to be on this, uh, on, on, on board here, there's a lot of torture. Wow. Well, you heard him earlier. He likes that. A lot of disappointment. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Clearly. You guys need to come together. Like Carrie said, it was mm. uh, bonding. Bondage. Yeah, bondage. Yeah. 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 I thought it was synergy. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was synergy, too, but apparently not. Mm. Not in Carrie's world. Well, listen. Not no. just, yeah. yeah. We're going we're gonna to ride this train, and we're going to ride it to the Super Bowl. Kirky? Come on, man. I could get on board with an NFC South championship. Yeah, I, that's about as far as I can go. Yeah. yeah. Hey. If you make it there, you can make it anywhere. So, and that's some once you win, teams in the NFC this year. anything is possible. Mm. He might be the best quarterback in the NFC right now. What, dude? Jalen Hurts. Did you watch him play last year? Are you talking about Kirk? Stafford? Yeah. What the hell was this talk two months ago? <laughs> he was injured with an Achilles yeah, injury. Yeah, Matthew Stafford. You guys said Baker he was. He, Anthony thought no. he sucked. And Jamie thought he sucked, too, no. until he watched the quarterback hold, hold show. On. I did not say that Kirk Cousins sucks. I said he was <laughs> fine. There's a huge yeah. difference. I said he's fine. And that's what he is now. And I just thought he was a dork. There are so, he's <laughs> fine. I just thought he was yeah, he yeah. He Then I realized there's somebody else who's a bigger dork than he was. I, uh, Kirk Cousins He's on the Steelers? Is, <laughs> no, he's yeah. on the <laughs> oh. Kirk Cousins is, it might be top two or three in NFC quarterbacks. Not uh, even. He's sure. probably top two. Yeah. Kerry has Kirk Cousins versus Russell Wilson in the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> Let's go. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. In what, Madden? Can't lose. In Madden. Can't lose. Tech Mobile. Yeah. Can't Even lose. Even then. You said, you, 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 shame on you. You said the Steelers are going to be me. nine and eight. He's turning on you, Anthony. Yeah. 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 The hell are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah. Yeah. Right. It's pretty no, reasonable. Yeah. They'll ten, be like eight, eight, ten. and one or something. No. Yeah, you got to throw a tie in there. Yeah, that's good for one of those. Five. I thought I was being kind <laughs> giving you a nine and eight record. I gave you the you division. Healthy. Well, yeah. <laughs> Like Patrick mad. Queen and healthy T.J. Watt and mm-hmm. Cam Hayward. Yeah. Have you seen our defense? I think oh, the defense the is great. Yeah, no, I'm, not I'm, a Steelers. I'm a Steelers fan, too. Yeah, I know you are. Uh, he's got his two teams. Yeah. 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 one team away from having the same amount of teams as Jamie. <laughs> That's right. That's right. On my way. See, it feels good, yeah. doesn't it? It's a win-win. <laughs> well, uh, I, I do have a third one. It's the Chiefs. <laughs> oh, boy. Anthony has his second, too. There you go. I No, I I thank the Chief. I thank Chief Nation for allowing me to be dragged behind on their bandwagon. I had a lot of fun. They didn't really allow you. They, you just hooked your chain. Yeah, that's what I'm, yes. You got a running behind. You were just did. trying to keep up as fast as you could. He looked like Tobey Maguire in Spider-Man 1 when he's, like, <laughs> slapping the bus. And Certainly. Then, that was me. You know. And then I got on the bus, and then they told me, basically, get to get off. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. I'm I'm going to find a seat anyways. It's fine. And then I said, thank you for you your... change yourself to the seat. I did. Really <laughs> yeah. And then I said, thank you for basically no hospitality, but I had a lot of fun. And then I, I, I let it go. Which I thought was the right thing to do. And then I traveled back on down the road back, to, to Miseryville. You're back down in, the, in, in Flowery Branch. That's correct. Falcons facility. You're revving up. Getting ready for old ready number eight. I think Kyle Pitts gives up that number. Eight. Oh. I'm you know, Kyle he hasn't Pitts, really I'm like, done much, so. Hey, you got enough. Doesn't make. That's true, too. <laughs> Give me a new number. <laughs> Glad you're here. What number do you want me to have? The hell out of this jersey. Pick the number for me so <laughs> that you can so you find know where me. I am. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oops. All right, let's do one more here. Let's stick with football from the six three six. Get my papers away from the, uh, the desk here. Yeah. <laughs> Another concussion. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Anthony came up with force one time, just about buckled himself. <laughs> he did. I kept going though. Looks like you're doing an Oklahoma drill with the with the desk. Oh no, pretty much. It was bad. You lost. The desk won. Yes, yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, no uh, man, it got lower. <laughs> <laughs> Low man wins. That's right. <laughs> That's it reminds correct. me of uh, uh, Rudy when uh, don't they have to run through a line at the end of their tenure in yes. high school? Yeah. That's w- when you finally retire, you'll have to go through a bunch of desks. Right. Oh. To, yeah. To call it a, call a career. Pool. Look, at, I'm going I'm going there for spring <laughs> yeah. break. So good luck. You guys got a helmet or anything for me? Yeah. I'll wear one. Mouth guard. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, last one here from the 636. Are you sold all this free agency moves in the NFL is good for the game? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about it. Yeah, we're talking about it. Unlike baseball, where we still no have two of the best baseball players. Baseball became yeah. very Not boring. Even yeah. You have signed. You had inactivity, and then you had two, two of the best pitchers <laughs> on time. They're still sitting at home. They're still right. sitting at home. No, that's better. They're right. Yeah, that's good for the game. Like no. they, they labeled it legal tampering, so now you go, oh, legal tampering. Yeah, right. It's, I mean, you don't have to label it, but that that's what they call it. Yep. People get excited. It's like you're cheating, but you're not because it's okay. <laughs> and everyone is all bought in. Yep. And everyone is signing and, and expecting new contracts. Your teams are going to look completely different than they did last year. Sign me up. I mean, Russell Wilson found a new team before Jordan Montgomery and Blake Snell. No kidding. I, I don't know how that happens. No kidding. All right. Well, they only cost a million and a half. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing for them. <laughs> Denver's paying the freight. Denver paid them to go away. Speaking of the NFL, NFL free agency winners and losers next. I want to win ESPN. Went down to the Missouri Athletic Club earlier today on my way into work and got my workout in, showered up, then went right down the street. It's part of my daily routine. I enjoy going down to the Missouri Athletic Club. Uh, you heard Jamie and I talked about earlier before, uh, you know, mentality and feeling great. And it's part of part of the, the healthy lifestyle now that uh, I wasn't necessarily living a couple, couple of years ago. But when it comes to the Missouri Athletic Club. They also have great events throughout each month. Each, each month, the West West Clause does a great job of providing different things to do for the family. So now that Easter's coming about, they'll have different Easter family events at the Missouri Athletic Club. If you go downtown, they do a great job holding kind of the, the swankier events, and they do a tremendous job of hosting those events downtown. But the Missouri Athletic Club, so many things to do, not only from a a single standpoint, but a family standpoint as well. I love the MAC. It's my MAC. It's Missouri Athletic Club.
Bart. Big, biggest, bigger, biggest winners and losers in free agency with Jamie Rivers and Kerry Davis. I'm Anthony Stalter. If you guys were to choose one person or one team to anoint the winner in free agency thus far, who would it be? For me, it's it's the Baltimore Ravens. The uh, the addition of Derrick Henry to that offense, which is something they desperately needed. Like, can you imagine that offense now? That's a nightmare. If Derrick Henry performs like he can, or yep. even a version of what he can, that's a big boost for that team. I, I really like Saquon going to the Eagles. I, I actually love it. I think that that's something that they needed. They, they got – there are so many weapons there offensively, and they're going to be able to spread the ball around but also stay balanced with a player like Saquon Barkley. It's going to be a huge loss for the New York Giants, but an, a great addition for the Philadelphia Eagles in getting Saquon. If I would have, if I if I go team, I would say Eagles. Mm-hmm. Adding Saquon Barkley, adding some of the other pieces that they did. I mean, they kind of created some cap space. They already had a good team. I would say Eagles, but I think the biggest winner is the fact that Kirk Cousins got another hundred million in guaranteed money. Amazing. I mean, this is somebody that just he has played the market perfectly. This is somebody coming off an, uh, an Achilles tear, who's thirty five, will be thirty six years old heading into next year. And he he simply went to the market, went to one team, said, put the money in the bag, (laughs) and the team did it. No issues. So I think the biggest winner has got to be Kirk Cousins. He picked the right team. He picked the right team. He picked a desperate team. So desperate for a quarterback. They are so desperate. They haven't been in the playoffs since 2017. They look at that division, and, you know, the the Saints have have the lesser version of Kirk Cousins and Derek Carr. The Panthers are an absolute mess. And even though the Bucs made the playoffs last year, Atlanta was in the driver's seat there for a while until the, until Tampa caught him and surpassed him. Well, so yeah. th- that division is is there for the taking for them. I think you also have. I mean, Kirk Cousins has done it right. You know, when most people complain about being franchise tagged, he was tagged twice. Mm-hmm. I, I don't care. Yeah, nineteen million. Put the money in the bag, million, Washington. Sign sign me up. Mm-hmm. And then then uh, the Vikings are like, we'll give you three years, ninety million years to sign me up. And let's do it again. And he has done, he's made $230 million. He'll end up making almost $400 million In guarantees. In, in, uh, yes. 300, over, close to 300, almost $300 million in guaranteed money. Just guaranteed money in One his One playoff win. He's done it right. It's a big win. I mean, it's big enough. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was, Marsh, that was the one in New Orleans, right? Yeah, that was the Kyle Rudolph <laughs> Kyle catch. Kyle Rudolph push-off? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, some people might think that. I think it was just a good catch. Uh, Adam Phelan with a great catch to set that up. Yeah, it was just a solid drive. And then went to San Francisco and got whipped, right? Yeah, that was because Kevin Stefanski uh, thought that he would then become the uh, Cleveland Browns head coach, so he didn't care anymore. That's, uh, uh, that's where my that's where, that's head, where goes. My head goes. Yeah. Understood, understood. Understood. Yeah. All right. Biggest loser. I, I, it's got to be. It's got to be the Bears and Justin Fields. The Bears mm-hmm. have actually made some good moves, and I think the, they'll be they'll be fine. But when it comes to Justin Fields, if you just look in a vacuum, it's him. They, he he's the biggest loser of of all of it here because he may wind up either staying disgruntled with Chicago or not going to a team that makes him a starter. I think he's the biggest loser in all this. I, again, I, I can't say that yet because I just don't know that the Chicago Bears are ready to move on because they've. They have drugged their feet in this whole process. If they were planning on trading him, you get out in front of all of this. You get out in front of all of these quarterbacks who are going to sign and essentially take away a play. Atlanta, Tampa, Pittsburgh needed a quarterback. The the Raiders need all of these teams sign someone. And and then you have your teams that you know are going to draft someone, the, the, the commanders, the Patriots. I I can't say for certain that that he is a loser in this because he may be where he is now come the start of 2024. Do you really think, though, that the Steelers, if they wanted Justin Fields, just decided to go ahead and take the, roll the dice with Russell Wilson? Well, it's, it's cheaper. I think that played a factor into it as well. If Russell Wilson is going to cost you a $1.3 million, veterans minimum, because the, the Broncos are going to cover – the entirety of the set, 38, 37 million of it, mm-hmm. whatever the case may be, he's still going to get paid that from the Broncos. So he's making $39 million, but the, the Steelers only had to pay 1.3 of it. I'm, yeah. Can, you would gladly take that over taking a Justin Fields, who you talked about earlier. But probably if you're trying to, to win. Take, but it, 
who's I, you are you are lower on uh, on Russell Wilson than I am. I am. He is an addition. He is an upgrade at the position. Kenny Pickett threw six touchdowns in twelve games. Mm -hmm. Six. Yeah, they both stink. I mm -hmm. haven't thrown a football. <laughs> I don't know if I ever threw a pass in the in the NFL. I threw one in college, but I could probably throw six touchdowns. I just get the ball to Deontay Johnson and George Pickens right now mm -hmm. and let them do their thing. Yeah. I is, think. Is I, Russ any worse than what Ben was at the end of his career? And that team still made the playoffs. No, Ben couldn't throw the ben, ball too yeah, right. Ben arm, Ben's arm was shot by the time mm -hmm. he was done yeah. his last year. That team made the playoffs, though. They did. It did. That's how consistent yeah. this franchise is. Absolutely, yeah. Well, that not, another 9-8 and eight season so, coming, man. So, yeah, it Come sucks on. that Russell Wilson nine and eight season. probably be doing that. Yeah. What are we doing here? Steeler Nation, let's weld. That's right. <laughs> That's well. Uh, Broncos. Steel got it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, Broncos, another loser, just because they had to they had to dump Russell Wilson. You couldn't really do anything. I thought the Panthers were a loser too. Oh God, they, they just keep getting worse. They traded Christian McCaffrey a couple years ago. They didn't even get a first round pick, did they? I don't in return so. for McCaffrey, no. they just traded their best defensive player, which was Brian, Brian Burns, Burns, for a second and a fifth, and they swapped fifths. So it was really just a second-round pick that they they lost their best pass rusher. Maybe they don't know what they're doing. I would say so. And maybe that's why they're And that's different regimes, issues. too. Well, it's still the same ownership. It's the same ownership, but so, Dan Morgan is now the GM. The top. It's just bad. Damn. Carolina's going to be bad for a long time. Yeah. Until the guy sells the team. Yes. I don't think he can get out of his own way. No, I don't think so either. You're right. All right, we've got the gauntlet. We have a gauntlet contestant? Yeah, so we have Joshua. Apparently his brother recently competed on the gauntlet. I don't know how long ago, but his brother lost, and now he is trying to one-up his brother. Well, I wonder who his brother lost to. Well, we're about to find out. Maybe it's a revenge situation. Revenge. <laughs> All right, gauntlet next on 101 ESPN. Hey, if you're a contractor or you own a business that needs recycling, well, you need to learn about Scrap Mart Metals. They are tailor-made for your business to meet your schedule and your budget. They understand the job site cleanup for contractors can be a mess. Set up a business account with Scrap Mart Metal to uh, recycle that metal. It's one less thing you have to do during cleanup. If you own heavy equipment, you know how frustrating and how often the repairs are when the time comes to end your suffering. Scrap Mart Metal will get it out of your way. They'll haul your equipment to one of their locations and get you a check the same day. And if you are a do-it-yourselfer, you want to haul it yourself, they have three convenient locations, Valley Park, Peevely, and Jonesburg. If it's metal, they buy it. It's recycling made easy. They offer a convenient drive-on scale, and they have the highest payout. You will always get top dollar for your scrap metals. Just visit ScrapMartMetals.com. My guy Lucas can talk to you about setting up a business account Again, if it's metal, they will buy it. Copper, wire, brass, stainless steel, aluminum, batteries, electric motor, steel, cast iron. If you got it, they'll take it from you. ScrapMartMetals.com and tell them Kerry sent you.
four categories, one challenger. Can you master the gauntlet? The gauntlet is powered by Master, your hometown source for business communications for more than 30 years. Visit Mastor.com. It's Fastlane on 101 ESPN 401. Your time check is brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler with Gary Davis, Jamie Rivers, I'm Anthony Stalter, and we welcome in Josh to the program. What's up, Josh? Hey there. How are you? We're doing good. So apparently your brother played in the gauntlet not too long ago. Is that correct? You know, you know what? I When I started thinking about it, he was, he actually went up against Randy Carricker uh, on the morning drive. What the hell? He said he did so, lose. Yeah. And, but yeah, I, since he lost, I'm like, man, if I can win, I can talk smack. Well, there you go. Yeah. Definitely That's that. not against Megamind, but sure. It's against one of us. <laughs> All right, Josh, would you like to face Andrew Marsh, Kerry Davis, Jamie Rivers, or me today? Uh, I'll take uh, Anthony Salter, you, sir. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, good luck to you, Josh. Thank you. All right. Anthony's going to head off to the cone of silence while he's making his way into that area. Josh, I'm going to need you to tell Marshy to spin that wheel. Marshy, spin that wheel. All right, Josh. What category are you looking for here? I think I'd prefer random. Oh. Okay. Well, you know with Let's Anthony, it usually ends up being hockey, so. Yep. And it's hockey. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, you, you can't even make this crap up. Uh. I'm telling you right now. Honestly, okay, hang on a second. I'm going to turn the camera here just a little bit so that people can see that it landed on hockey. <laughs> We're not making that this That would have been up. my last choice. Oh, sorry <laughs> about that. Usually oh, Anthony's boy. too. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. Marshy, we need to launch codes. I'll give those to you in one right. second. While Marshy's getting that together, there'll be four questions. Each of them are worth two points. If you don't, if you answer them properly without the options, Thank you, sir. they're worth one point if you answer correctly using the options, and of course, worth nothing if you get it wrong. Josh, are you ready to go? I'm ready to go. <laughs> All right. Once again, category hockey, question one. Before Kasperi Kapanen was claimed off of waivers, which blue wore number 42 last season with the blues? Uh, um... Give me the options. All right. Was it Logan Brown, Will Bitten, or Hugh McGing? Uh, Will Britton. Final answer? No. What was the first one? All right. Here are the options again are Logan Brown, Will Bitten, or Hugh McGing? All right. I'm going to go uh, Hugh Bing. Okay. Final answer? Final answer. Okay. Question number two, Mackenzie McEachern and which other current blue were selected in the third round of the 2012 NHL draft? Oh, man, I'm a, my brother's going to be talking smack. Um, <laughs> give me these options. Is it Jordan Bennington, Sammy Blay, or Colton Pareko? Uh, I'm going to go with Colton Pareko. Final answer. Thank you. Question number three. Colton Pareko's first goal in the Stanley Cup playoffs was scored against which team? Um, uh, uh, he got drafted in 2019. Uh, I don't know. Give me the give me the options. Options are the Dallas Stars, the Nashville Predators, or the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, I'm going to say, um, I don't know, the Nashville. Final answer? Final answer. All right, Josh, final question. Adam Gaudet has played 220 NHL games in his career. With which team has he played the most games with? Uh, who is it? What's his name again? Adam Gaudet. 
I'll take the options. All right. <laughs> Is it the, the Chicago Blackhawks, the Ottawa Senators, or the Vancouver Canucks? Oh, this one's definitely the Canucks. Final answer? Final answer. All right. Well, time to get Anthony back in here. All right, Josh, see. how are you feeling about this? I'm packing my lunch for tomorrow. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. 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 All right. Anthony's back. He's plugging his ears in here. Anthony, uh, how's the cone of silence today? It was good to listen to a little uh, Temple of the Dog. Oh, did you? Oh. I'm going yeah. hungry. Yep. So... Ryder started playing that one, and then he switched to uh, Say Hello to Heaven. Oh, mm. oh, boy. All right. Either way, good good jams. Mm. All right, well, um, you better pack a lunch because the uh, category is hockey. Yeah, good. I wanted hockey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I saw in Ryder. I, I, as soon as I sat down, I said, I want hockey today. Mm, I'm sure. <laughs> I know. He probably said, I'm probably going to get hockey. You got it. I wanted it. Well, you did. Right. Anthony's 3-1 yeah. and one in hockey. Thank you. Yep. That's why, that's why I wanted it. <laughs> All right, here we go. Question one. Before Kasperi Kapanen was claimed off of waivers, which blue wore the number 42 last season with the blues? 42? Mm. Was Barbashev 42 or was he like 46, 48? Didn't Sammy Blay at one point wore 42? Forty-two, you say? <laughs> yep. I think Barbashev was forty-eight. I'll have the. Can I have the options, please? Sure. Was it Logan Brown, Will Bitten, or Hugh McGing? Well, good thing I asked for the options, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go with Logan Brown. Final answer. Question number two. Mackenzie McEachern and which other current blue were selected in the third round of the 2012 NHL draft? Gary, that's a fantastic question. That's Just right. for, you know, I, I didn't want to go through all the drafts in my mm -hmm. head. And I could, certainly. Uh, I'll take the options. Is it Jordan Bennington, Sammy Blay, or Colton Pareko? In 2012? Mm -hmm. Colton Pareko, Sammy Blay, or who? Jordan Bennington. Let's go with uh, Colton Pareko, final answer. Question number three. Colton Pareko's first goal in the Stanley Cup playoffs was scored against which team? I'll just take a shot in the dark here. Blackhawks, final answer. All right, last question. Adam Gaudet has played 220 NHL games in his career. <laughs> with which team has he played the most games with? Hmm. Options, please. Was it the Chicago Blackhawks, the Ottawa Senators, or the Vancouver Canucks? Let's go with the Ottawa Senators. Final answer. Okay. <clears throat> Let's go over this. Start right here at the top. Question one. Before Kasperi Kapanen was claimed off of waivers, which blue wore number 42 last year? Josh, you said Hugh McGing. Anthony, you said Logan Brown. Both of you used the options. Answer is... Will Bitten. Will Bitten. We had him surrounded. Mm -hmm. You sure did. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's yeah. tough. Anthony, you don't know this, but Josh actually had Will Bitten as his original answer. He oh, did. really? Can't and then we asked him final answer, and he scrambled back and asked for the options again. He staltered it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sucks, man. I've been there. Let's go to question two. Mackenzie McEachern and which other current blue were selected in the third round of the 2012 NHL draft? Josh, you said Colton Pareko. Anthony, you said 
Colton Pareko? Answer is. It is Colton Pareko. But both of you use the options. One, one. After two. Let's go to question four. Adam Gaudet has played 220 NHL games in his career. With which team has he played the most games with? Josh, you said the Vancouver Canucks. Use the options. Anthony, you said the Ottawa Senators, I believe, is what you said, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It depends on if the answer is right. You said Ottawa Senators. Yeah, because I scribbled here. (laughs) (laughs) Ottawa Senators. Kerry, the answer is the Vancouver Canucks. That's what I said. Vancouver Canucks. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie, you, you wrote down Vancouver. <clears throat> yeah. No, it didn't because it has an S. It says Senators. Well, All right. Canucks. <laughs> so we find ourselves here at the last question. Josh is up two to one. Next, last question. Colton Pareko's first goal in the Stanley Cup playoffs was scored against which team? Josh, you took the options and said the Nashville Predators. That's a good guess. Anthony, you just decided to blind your fault, I, blindfold yourself. I did. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I did. And you said the Chicago Blackhawks. I did. Yep. If it's the Blackhawks, <laughs> Anthony will get two points. Yeah. And win. Yes. If it's the Predators. Josh or any other team. Or any other team at in all. America. <laughs> Josh Wins. Yeah. Uh, the answer is... It's the Chicago Blackhawks! <laughs> Josh! Oh my God. You Are have you chosen serious? poorly. You lose! <laughs> yep. The Chicago Blackhawks. Anthony ends up winning 3-2. Yeah. Good job. Good job, Josh. Well, I only not changed that uh, first uh, answer. Uh, I know. You can't stalter it. it like that. You uh, know better than that. Can't stalter it against the stalter. No. no. <laughs> I staltered you on the Blackhawks, yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, it just worked that time. Yeah, Josh, great time, buddy. yeah, thanks for playing. Thanks for listening, man. Good stuff. Yep, thanks. All Good right, job. take care. That's yeah. hilarious. In my head, I go, they've played the Sharks a lot. They've played the Blackhawks a fair amount. Why don't we just go with the Blackhawks? <laughs> it uh, was a good guess. Real good Obviously. Guess. I played the odds on that. Me. Yeah. Sure did, wow. Anthony. So mm-hmm. proud of you. Thank you. I appreciate that, yeah. guys. Hey, when you know, you know. Yep. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. You guess, you guess. Either way. No, no, no. It's, uh, no you knew that. I knew that. It was an mm-hmm. educated guess. Great it guess. was. Ish. Yeah. What do you mean, Ish? No, it was great, man. Nailed you, it. You did awesome. I'm proud of you. I told you, you that. a bullseye. Mm-hmm. I told you. I'm proud of you. What else do you need from me? Oh, he's that less stank, yeah, I, I think. I don't think he likes your tone. Stank. Yeah. He's that, he's, he's that guy. He's like, is that good enough? Never good yeah. enough. Yeah. Was that good enough for you? Yeah, I'm proud of you. You were awesome. No, but seriously, was it good enough? <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. It was the best I've ever yeah. seen. We got a real Tom Brady, Bill Belichick thing going on here. Yeah. Yeah, I won, yet he's not satisfied. Mm-hmm. It's one of those deals. It's how you win, Oh, Anthony, Anthony I'm yeah. satisfied. <laughs> Next thing you know, he's going to blame you for the balls being deflated. Yeah, yeah. probably. Yep. Well, he's going to throw you under them. the bus. Well, leave him alone. You know, like my balls a certain way. Uh, don't we all? <laughs> the Yankees, they're proactive. They potentially lose Garrett Cole. They start calling the White Sox for Dylan Cease. Not that the deal has happened. Why aren't the Cardinals more proactive? Kerry will tell you why oh, next. I want to win these games. If you need to remodel something within your home, how about you go with the right remodeling company? That's that's Mosby Building Arts. They're fantastic. A lot of times we as homeowners, we think that we're going to save a whole bunch of money by doing the remodeling either by ourselves when it comes to, you know, do-it-yourself projects, which is great. You know, if they're smaller projects, no problem. But if they're bigger projects that require permits or tearing down walls or plumbing, you want to make sure that you do it right. And if you don't know what you're doing, I don't. 
I call Moe's Speed Building Arts. They're fantastic. They'll come out. They'll lay out everything for you. They'll take proper measurements, too. And you may think, well, yeah, of course. Not all companies do that. A lot of, a lot of times they'll send you a rough estimate. Yeah, we could do this project for this amount. And you think, boy, I'm saving a lot up front. I'm saving a lot over the long haul. What you don't know is that plumbing cost and elect electrician cost are not included with that bid. Some companies don't even come out to measure. You have to go with Mosby. They're fantastic. They do it right the first time. They have all the, the products shipped to them. They have everybody in-house, plumbers in-house, electricians in-house. So when they give you what it's going to cost, that's, that's what it's going to cost. And you're going to get it done right. And you're not going to be displaced if it's a kitchen or, you know, a bath for too long. You'll know what's going on because you'll have weekly updates. So give Mosby a call. They're fantastic. Give them a call at 314-909-1800. Again, 314-909-1800. You can also visit callmosby.com. Callmosby.com. Tell them start to show you love hearing that out of you. And then make sure you go with the right remodeling company, which, of course, is Mosby Building Arts. The Yankees don't know how long Garrett Cole could be out for, but they're not going to just say, well, we'll we're fine with what we have. They apparently called the White Sox about Dylan Cease, and Dylan Cease... Um, uh, big, you know, big name, not Garrett Cole, but certainly somebody that could fill at the top end of the rotation if the Yankees wanted to make a move. They could also sign Blake Snell or Jordan Montgomery, bring him back. But ultimately, the Yankees continue to be proactive. And I think a lot of Cardinals fans are asked, well, we wouldn't see this out of the Cardinals. Why not? And I said the carry has the answer for you. So, Kerry? Well, the Cardinals are, are excited about their guys. They got six starters, potentially. <laughs> guys that can really, you know, go out there. We went out and signed three. Matter of fact, hold on, excuse me. Sorry. I got to take Fire my it up. glasses off. Fire it up, Marshall. <laughs> <laughs>
Anthony, I don't know if you know this. So the Cardinals went out and signed three starters in the offseason. That was one of the things that, you know, we talked about that was a, a necessity. Right, Kyle Gibson, Lance Lynn, and, and Sonny Gray. That, that was kind of the, the mindset going into the How season. How are those guys pitching in well, spring? It, it, it's spring. <laughs> Is it the regular season? Has the regular season started? Did I miss something? No, Is there sir. a memo that went out that I didn't get? It's Mm-mm. spring. I mean, they're literally right? pitching against lesser players. Right? Well, so, well <laughs> uh, your, your opinion, they're, they're Major League Baseball players, sir, and they're all there That's for a reason-ish. Ish. Don't worry about it. These guys were signed, and so the Cardinals have, have extreme confidence. Now, Sonny Gray went down with an injury, but... He was on the mound pitching a couple of days ago, so he's ready to roll. He's he's I mean he he's basically knocking at the door for for being ready for possibly opening day. We don't know. We're still working around it. We're, we're, we're going to figure some things out. But he's not in in a Garrett Cole situation where your elbows that's eh, that's that's upper extremity. We're lower extremity. We're, we're working on things here that are don't worry about the Cardinal staff. <laughs> I love sometimes you get going, you get going, and then you, and you just throw it. Don't worry about it, and then you just keep the feet moving. Don't worry about it. Okay, uh-huh. we are where we need to be. We are exactly where we need to be. Matthew Libertor, maybe not as great of a day as we wanted today, but mm-hmm. you know, it's spring training. We're talking about practice, right? <laughs> Allen Iverson told you all years ago, practice. Mm-hmm. Talk to me about the game. The games start when they get to L.A. and they play the Dodgers. And that's when it'll be real. And that's when you can start counting the records, the wins, and the losses. Until then, Anthony, Jamie, we're good. All right? And Sonny Gray, he'll be good. Blake Snell, you stay on the couch. You've been sitting there for months now. You're not ready to pitch. You think Jordan Montgomery is ready to roll right now today? Hell no. Yes, I do. He probably, probably. is. I think but he's so, really ready. He's yeah. probably ready. He's quite but, pissed off, too, probably. Yeah, I would think so. Let the Yankees deal with that. They deal with those issues better in New York than we do here in St. Louis. We're ready to go with the guys we got. We signed three pitchers. Trust and believe that this organization is ready to roll. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Yeah. That's why we don't need them. Uh, the risk of risk. <laughs> The so we don't verse. need him? You had me until that point. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need him. We got our guys. We're bullish on our roster. Oh, oh yeah. That's a good one, Mo. <laughs> you got to hit, hit on your young guys. At some point. That's, at some point, you got to hit on your – These are the, – you're, you're talking about bridge gaps. They're not going to sign a bunch of pitchers at a hundred and something million dollars. Sonny Gray is a really good pitcher, and he was also cost-effective. Seventy-five million for for a, a, a guy that could be at the top of your rotation is a drop in the bucket for most major league teams. Mm-hmm. The Cardinals are are buying time until some of these young guys are ready to go. That's why you sign Lance Lynn. That's why you sign Kyle Gibson. I just hope that if those two guys specifically, Lance, Lance Lynn, and Kyle Gibson, and we could throw Stephen Matz into this mix too, the guys that are either on one year deals or Stephen Matz who's been injured the first two years of a four-year contract. I hope. We got two more years? Yeah, you got two more years. Oh, yeah, this yeah. is his third. Yep. He did four for four, 44. Not great. It's okay. If you – Yeah, exactly. No, another <laughs> another guy that's kind of cost-effective, right? Okay. Not going to break the bank. <laughs> if pitch. those guys really struggle <laughs> – I mean, what you say is true. If those guys really struggle, I hope the Cardinals are ready to rip the Band-Aid off right now with their young guys. Are the young guys ready, though? I don't like, care. that would be... I don't care. <laughs> Wait, Anthony, hold on. No, I you, no, you, I don't. No, you do. <laughs> I'm so because sick of this. They, because I've said this before. They cannot I'm afford so another 90-loss season. I'm no, sick of can't. the Taylor Mots. I'm sick of the, hey, you know, this guy does, does a really good job for us. So uh, we're going to give him a shot. And that's where they should leave him. Oh, sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Jamie, you were told that throughout your career. Yeah. They said, hey, you're great in the locker room, and Stay we're going to leave you right here. When we get dressed, yep. you you put your regular clothes when we on. When win, and you, you can doing? play the music <laughs> and make sure the beer's cold. I got it. Everybody deal. has a it. role. Yeah. yeah. Did the paycheck come in at the same time as the rest of the guys? Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, right. It's slightly different. Yeah, however, however. Uh, however. Still there. It was there. Correct. I'm sick of watching the John Lester's bitch. He doesn't pitch anymore. Let's so go. Don't worry about it. John Lackey. You know what yeah. I mean. No, like Lackey, Lackey was fine. Okay. Lackey was fine. I, I, I'm so tired of watching the, the, the older guys on one of your deals. The elder and, statesmen? You come don't on. like the elder statesmen. What's your problem with We're the We're the young right? dudes. You're ages. Let's you, go. You hating on the older people? Anthony? If we're going to lose, let's lose in style. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think Mo actually looks at what they're doing and is, and is like, we're fine? Yes. 
He has to. Yes, I'm, just, I I'm, do. I'm trying to be like I realistic. Really do you think yes. he actually believes? I do. Maybe not as much as he or did like, like a year ah, ago. Crap, here I, we go again. I think maybe now he's probably more on like the old oh crap, but you I don't do think it to so. Yourself. I don't think so. I think he looks at this team and has full faith because otherwise, why would you sign him? I hope he's drunk. Why would you bring these guys? Well, I hope, I hope he is. I hope he's drunk there. Well, he, no. he guarantee is. No. I hope he's like just. I hammered. think last year he might have got had a few like at towards the end like oh this is well this is stressful. What I'm saying is if he's watching this and he's like we're gonna be fine I hope he's hammered. I would love for them to pan up to <laughs> the management's box and just look uh, over and Mo has a straight bottle of bourbon and he's got yeah. he's got the glass in one hand. But he's drinking out of the bottle. Yes. <laughs> he's, he's that far gone that the glass is sitting there with the, with the rocks in but it. But he's still and he's drinking, drinking, out drinking out of the bottle. He's still, like, like moving the yeah, glass. He's so swirling he's around. swirling it around. <laughs> yeah. And then drinking the bottle. <laughs> you forgot a step, sir. You, you yeah. got to yeah. pour it into the glass. Ah. Yeah, don't worry about it. Let me, tell, glass. let me tell you something. <laughs> Here's what I think. Yeah. You. <laughs> all you guys doing nine beers and nine innings, uh, look at me. First right. of all, thank you for your $1,000. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Cardinal fan. Where do you think he got that uh, that bourbon from? Oh, he guaranteed he visited my friends over at Dirt Cheap. They've got a great selection, and they got all the high end stuff that Mo loves too. Let's there get, you go. Let's get dirty, except for the players. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah, that's right. Well, they yeah. don't have players there. Right. They, if they did, though, if they probably... did, they'd be awesome. They would. Be yeah. Mo, yeah. Would Mo shop there for his players? He'd be smart if he did. Okay. <laughs> Dirt cheap carry. It's not the product. That's what you pay. Okay. So you'd be paying less for a great ah, player. Right. Well, hell See, yeah, he, he's definitely gonna be there. <laughs> Get dirt cheap online too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jamie's on top of it here. All right, six pack is next. I don't know what we accomplished in that segment. Three one four three nine nine ninety six forty six. The Air Comfort Service Sex Line. So you got a question for us? Send it in. We might answer it next. Don't want to win ESPN. If you are currently in the market for replacement windows, please go see my friends over at Window World. They're the best in the business at what they do. And here are a couple of things that you need to know. One, they're ranked number one in number of windows sold in the country by Qualified Remodeler Magazine. Window World windows are one of the two windows with the good housekeeping seal of approval. Why is that? Because they have a double strength glass that gives it a strength that's not commonly found in replacement windows. I know this because I went over to the showroom myself. John told me to get the John, the owner, told me to stand on the window, and I did, and it didn't break. And they said, why don't you jump up and down a little bit? I did, and it didn't break. So they've got an incredible product over there, and they back it all up with a lifetime warranty that covers all the parts, the glass breakage, and the labor, and just call for an appointment. Call them at 314-993-1800. Again, that's 314-993-1800. Get over there. Tell them that Jamie Rivers sent you in. They love hearing that. And the customer service, by the way, is second to none. That is the one thing that they pride themselves on is customer service and customer satisfaction. They read all of their reviews, and they're constantly trying to get better for you, the customer. So again, call them, book an appointment, 314-993-1800, or visit them at windowworldstlouis.com.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update driven by Johnny Londoff Chevrolet and Johnny Londoff Autoplex. The Blues won 5 1 last night over the Boston Bruins. They'll take on the Los Angeles Kings tomorrow. Pre-game starts at 5 30. Puck drop is at 6 30, and you can catch all the action right here on 101 ESPN. We'll talk later in the show around 5 30 with Joe Vitale, so stay tuned for that. The Cardinals defeated the Red Sox today. Some spring training action for you as Victor Scott went three for three with two runs scored. Alec Burles and two for three with a home run. Matthew Libertor, he pitched four innings, gave up seven hits, five earned runs, but struck out five. Tonight, we'll have the West Coast Championship t- uh, right here on 101 ESPN. Some college hoops. Tip-off is at eight. We have our sports six-pack coming up next, so if you have a question for us, send it our way to the Air Comfort Service text line, 314-399-9646. Sports six-pack coming up next. I'm Andrew Marsh, and the Sports Center update is driven by Johnny Londoff. Find new roads in Shop 24 Four seven at Londoff.com and LondoffAutoplex.com. Are you kidding me? I have a question. It's time for the fast lane to answer your sports questions. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I want to have them answered immediately. Asking me all these weird questions. Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer me. The sports six pack is now. Well, Kerry Davis and Jamie Rivers, I'm Anthony Stalzer. Here is Andrew Marsh with your questions for the Sports Six Pack. Question number one. All right, gentlemen, from the 217, what's some of the best nicknames you guys have came up with? <clears throat> Let's best see here. Oh, you probably got it. Anthony has a few for boats and Yep. What not? Yep. Bob, uh, really boat name for for Miles Michaelis was um, "You Hate Me Because You Ain't Me." <laughs> I thought okay. that was good. Miles didn't like it. Yeah. Jamie came fan? up with Miles Michaelis' uh, the nickname Moose, Moose. which he, he did didn't not like. like. That either. He hated yeah. It. Oh, he literally so. hated it. Guy's never been the same either on the mound. He so. hasn't. Mm-mm. Why did he hate that? I don't know. Yeah, that's a good I was like name. Moose, big, powerful animal. Like, mm-hmm. who doesn't respect the moose? Yep. He's like, well, I'm from. Down near Florida, I'm like, okay, so we want to be called the manatee? Right. Like, <laughs> who's gator? Way way the sea cow? The gator. Come on. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Whatever. I call Mitch Trubisky, Mitchie Football. Mm-hmm. Mitchie Football. Mm-hmm. He, he doesn't yeah. do that well enough to have that nickname. Mm-hmm. That's why it's funny. That's, That's actually, yeah, most yeah. nicknames are usually counter to what that is. This is true. I know. think Shaky Bakey's probably the best Shaky Bakey is a good yeah, one. Shaky yeah. Bakey. Shaky Bakey just got paid, though, so I don't he know. He did, yeah. If you want to call him that anymore. Now he can shake and bake. Yeah. I, uh, I gave Paul Stasny the nickname Polly Walnuts. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, that stuck. That's like his Twitter handle or his Instagram handle. So that, got that one. Uh, it's called Zidane Chara Chewbacca. <laughs> <laughs> just start calling him Chewy. Nice. Did you ever tell you that story? No. So we're in Long Island playing for the Islanders, and uh, we're doing the video. And Z is, you know, he's a massive human being. And he's mauling guys out on the ice. And the coach is like, well, Z, you got to be staying in position here. You don't get running. He's just mauling guys. <laughs> and I just lean back and I <laughs> Z stands up, who do this? Who do this? Who do this? So I'm like, oh, it wasn't me. <laughs> so every time we'd be something on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> head would snap over, so we start calling him Chewy. That's awesome. Yeah. That's, pretty, that's pretty good that's pretty, uh, Chewy impersonation. That is. Yeah. That that is now we're doing that. Mm-mm. Yeah, just get it right. <laughs> Imagine if you concentrate on hockey. <laughs> yeah. That's way less fun. Uh, Question number two. From the 314, do the Carolina Panthers have a mad scientist plan where they're going, <laughs> where they're going to be stop. good? <laughs> no. <laughs> mad scientist, full stop. Or, uh, or, are they, or are they just, or do they just want Bryce Young to fail? I, I, don't, I don't think they want, I don't him, to think they want him to fail. I don't think they know how to succeed. No. I agree. Yeah. I, it starts at the top. If your owner is, is a madman or a mad scientist and running head coaches, running head coaches, around ragged and and they are like yeah no nah, nah, this is crazy i gotta meet with this guy every day about what what are you meeting with the owner about every day i need to go coach man i need to go get my team prepared i got a rookie quarterback who don't know nothing not because he's he just a rookie he doesn't know much let me coach so i no I, I no no plan no plan for success 
They traded away their best defensive player. They traded away their best offensive player two years ago. How can you try? How can you expect to be better? They traded away their other best offensive player. They keep firing to the coaches. Bears a few years ago, at DJ Moore. There's no consistency in the coaching. No. Like, it starts at the top. The owner's a donkey. Honestly, this guy, like, <laughs> if you own a football team and you played collegiately or pro or you've coached, then, hey, sit down in the office and talk to me about on-the-field stuff. If not, man, go. Just go. Like, Robert Kraft, I'm watching that dynasty right now. How good is that? It's pr- I've it's, been telling these two yeah, to watch man. it. Honestly, yeah. it's, it's I've unbelievable. I've been watching the Marvel movies. I told you to take a break. I can't. that's saying a lot. He's, he's dialed in. I'm dialed and in, then, man. Captain America. If you love football, you will Iron love man. this documentary. I, I don't I love I, the look, I agree with you. I don't Does either, it matter? but it's cool. It you makes thought, you no, kind of no, like him for a little bit. It's not what you think exactly. But there's a situation to where... Um, oh, I just finished it. What player was it? The player wanted to play more, and Bill wouldn't play them, and Robert Kraft went down. Oh, it's oh, Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe. Drew Bledsoe. Yeah. He's sitting there, and he's, like, wanting to come back and play, and Bill won't play him. So Robert Kraft is like, well, I'll go have a talk with Bill. Had a quick talk, and Bill was like, no, I got, you know, and he's like, got to respect it. It's my guy. Like, sorry, man. Mm-hmm. He's like, if, if Tom Brady struggles, you know, then I'll come back again to him. But I got to trust my coach. So that's the owner going down, talking to the coach, because nobody was completely sold on Tom Brady, even towards the end of that season. Well, the players weren't either. No, the players were like, yeah. He said like a speech, and I don't want to spoil too much, but he said like a speech, and everyone's like, all right, Tom, sounds good. <laughs> like, okay. Like, settle down, kid. No, it's, <laughs> he was all fired up. You know, he's a starter now. He yeah. says, I'm not giving this position back. I'm not giving it back. And they're right. like, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Little did they know, he never gave it back. No. Yeah, 20 plus years. <laughs> yeah. so, but anyway, so the owner, in my opinion, needs to get the hell out of the way. Let your, If you pick your GM and your coach, let them do their job. When it comes to finances and paying players and contracts, now you can put your 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 information in there. You can put your opinion involved there because that's your money at that point. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, Jerry Jones doesn't do that. He was Jerry like he is was, the GM, though. He looked like he was having some whiskey during that playoff game and so. Yeah, he didn't have enough in the box. <laughs> Probably should have. <laughs> should have ordered another round. Yep. Uh, but no, the Panthers don't have any sort of mad scientist plan here. That's one of the worst rosters in the league. And Just mad. He, and it continues yeah. to be one of the worst Just rosters mad. in the league. With no draft picks now. Well, no first round pick to, 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 to build things up quickly. Good luck, Bryce Young. Hmm. Question number three. From the 636, you win a trillion dollars. And the NFL says, hey, you get to own an expansion team. What are you naming the team? What is the mascot? Where do you build a new stadium oh. slash dome? Wow. <laughs> well, the St. Louis Winter Soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's what I'm going with. I was thinking St. Louis, too. Now I don't know about the Winter Soldiers. Yeah. <laughs> You've I'm missed a lot. You missed a lot. <laughs> St. Louis Riverboat Gamblers. Um, hmm. I, know. I don't know. I don't care. It's my okay. team. I got a trillion dollars. Like, You're fired. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just, my office. I just bought Hubbard. <laughs> You're fired. That's not how much it costs to own a football <laughs> team. It's a lot of money. It is. A trillion a dollars. Teams. Yeah. yeah, you could. A couple of them. Mm-hmm. I'll go, I don't know. St. Saint Louis Stallions fits, fits well mm. to me for some reason. Well, uh, where, where are you seeing the Stallions? Oh, yeah, Clydesdale, Stallion. Mm-hmm. Well, that was the, I think that was supposed to be the original name. Yeah. Was it? Mm-hmm. There you go. The Clydesdale. Oh, you knew that. No, I didn't. I didn't. Really? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, St. Louis Stallions. Never knew that. I don't get it, though. Like, I don't see Nobody horses. Does. I don't see wild horses running around well, in St. Louis. Well, use your horses. imagination, Jamie. Well, if I use my imagination, I'd come up with a lot well, of different names. You came up with the Riverboat Gamblers. Yeah, the <laughs> first, first person we signed in is Calvin Ridley. <laughs> He's the first pick. What do you see, see down on the river? What do you see? See boats. What do you see? I see gambling. Yeah. Gam- ri- river boats. What's the mascot going to be? Uh, uh, a lot of, <laughs> a chip? No. <laughs> We're going to have two mascots. <laughs> the dealer? A slot that. machine? No, we're going to have two mascots. <laughs> Anthony, I like this. We have two mascots. It's going to be a pair of dice. Oh. <laughs> Are they fuzzy? No. <laughs> they came from the mirror. Always rolled snake eyes. <laughs>
much. That's, Come here, guys. that's not better than a stallion running onto the field. Listen, I'm all for a stallion. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you can get a winner. Listen, I'm all for a stallion and all its glory and its mating capabilities. Carrie, I get it, okay? <laughs> what? I mean, who doesn't want a stallion? Right, Anthony? Right. Yeah. Yes. I'm trying to be realistic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to be realistic. So we are bringing a team back to St. Louis, of though. Of course. Are we going to play would... at the Dome? Or we... No. no. I'm oh, going to blow up no. that Dome no. and put a brand new one somewhere yeah. else. Are we yeah. keeping it downtown? Or no. Are we, are we moving it? I'm going out. Going out west? And I'm going out near Earth City. All okay. those that, that those diff, like those there, warehouses and all that stuff, but every highway. Stitch. Every yeah it does, but this, <laughs> that's because it's closer to you. This is a stink. No, not just that, but <laughs> <laughs> all the highways. Got a trillion dollars. Yeah, what are you complaining? They just want to chop up my money. idea, and they don't listen to anything right, I say. Right. No, you got a trillion yeah. dollars. You, you go ahead. Down to the show. How can you be called the Riverboat Gamblers in your stadium <laughs> is in Earth City? Okay, Marshy, I'm going to educate you. You're from St. Louis, right? I get the river. No, no, yeah. st- no, stop. Where is Earth City? What is I it get, right I next get, to? It's right next to the Missouri River. Thank you. Education. I know, but I'm thinking of like the Casino the, the, Queen, the Mississippi. No. The Mississippi. I still River. haven't finished telling you guys no. why would be. <laughs> right, no, no, my bad. My all bad. Of the highways now lead through there. You can okay. connect everything, so people from all over St. Louis and area and Illinois can get to that area easily. You get a massive piece of land that you can develop that nothing else is really there. You just because you got all the money, you buy up some of those things. You make a whole like football village over there. Mm-hmm. Is the floodplain over there? No. I don't know. Floodplain. You just it, are you are you, are you indoor or outdoor stadium? Oh, um, retractable. Ah, we got I the like money. Think. Oh, yeah, like we that. do. We got the money. It's we're gonna spin it out. Retractable. Are we gonna Are we gonna make the city of St. Louis pay for our stadium? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even with a, yeah, even yeah. With a trillion <laughs> dollars. I'm gonna, make, <laughs> I'm gonna make Stan Kroenke pay for it. How do you think you want a million or a <laughs> trillion <laughs> dollars? I'm not talking about giving it away. Own, right. Stan Kroenke paid the city already. What seven hundred million? Mm-hmm. He can pass that over to me, and that way I could say, "Look, at, I'm sticking it to Kroenke because he's paying for the stadium." Nice. The whole city be like, "Yes, Jamie, that's Jamie. Jamie. Give him that money, Jamie. 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 Not spending his own though. No, never. Oh. Smart. Well, that's how they all do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He, he does become an owner. Hmm. All right, the rest of the six <laughs> the back next. The Riverboat Gamblers. I want to win ESPN. <laughs> Shut your face. <laughs> Jamie Rivers, Anthony Salter, back with you here, joined by our good buddy, Stewie, from Stewart's American Mortgage Corporation. And, Stewie, I heard you had a customer today that was refinancing, and you were able to help him out. That's right, Jamie. What we did was we refinanced him. He saved a half a percent on his mortgage, didn't cost him a dime, knocked off that PMI, saved $320 a month on his payment. Now, here's what's going on. Last year, especially towards the second half of the year, Most people who got mortgages are in the mid to upper sevens in that ballpark. We can give you a rate lower than what you have, knock off a half percent, doesn't cost you a dime, 
and you'll save money immediately. Six months from now, if the rates go down, you can do it again. If you go to other lenders, they're going to charge you thousands of dollars. It may not be worth it, but with us, with the bagel loan, it doesn't cost you a dime. You recognize the savings immediately. You're way ahead of the game. Jamie, this is why Stewie's the best. He's going to save you money over the long haul. He's going to stay on top of things like what the Federal Reserve is doing. He's going to stay on top of things that you need to know that's going to impact your loan. So you do have to pick up the phone, though. That's the that's that's one thing that you have to do to get started. Do it right now. Call his personal cell phone number at 314-324-4440. Again, that's 314-324-4440. Day, night. Text, call, Stewie's ready for your your call, and tell him that Jamie and Anthony told you to give you a ring so he knows you heard it right here on 101 ESPN. If you didn't hear that phone number, you can always Google the bag alone. Stewie, keep up the great work. Have a good night, guys. NMLS number 226715. Congratulations to John Rudolph from Festus, Missouri. He was just named our 101 ESPN Blues Fan of the Week. Submit your pick now at 101ESPN.com to be the next Fan of the Week. Taking home Blues tickets and a $50 Buffalo Wild Wings gift card. 101 ESPN's Blues Fan of the Week is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. Official member of This Bar Bleeds Blue. Presented by Bud Light. It's time for the fast lane to answer your sports questions. I want to ask you a bunch of questions. I want to have them answered immediately. Asking me all these weird questions. Answer the question. Answer the question. Answer me. The sports six pack is now. To finish off the sports six pack here in the fast lane on 101 ESPN with Kerry Davis and Jay Glad Rivers. To see you all. I'm Anthony Stalter. What? We were just hanging out. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're laughing yeah. when you came in. What did you think? You guys were talking smoke. <laughs> well, we, no, we were about to start. Yeah, and then yeah. you, all, you know. Did we get here on time? Yes, you did. Ish. Yeah. We're here. Anthony, you're here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Marsh, go. Question number four. From the 314, what do you think about a future Cardinals infield consisting of Burleson at first, Donovan slash Segacy at second, Gorman at third, and Mason Wynn at short? Jordan Walker would remain in right field. Um, I don't think about it. Yeah, I don't think much about that. What about a Jordan Walker at first base or third? Tommy mm-hmm. Edmond at second. Sure. Mason Nolan Wynn. Arenado at third. Where are we putting Segacy? He's, he's Segacy can be. Well, this is like a future. This base. is the How future. How far that future are we talking? Like when the, when the big yeah, guys are out. base. So when Arenado and, and Goldschmidt are retired. Like yes. Whoa, whoa. When they're no longer on the I mean, cards. They, they, they will when retire they're no longer at some point. here. Yep. I promise. Every player does, Jamie. Oh, I know it. Yeah. <laughs> Not usually when we want to. No, never but... when we want to. We didn't get that luxury. No. Care. I should have went they, to play in Canada. They told us. <laughs> You're done. Well, the good Lord told me. <laughs> <laughs> You're done. That's it for you, buddy. Uh, never mind. I'll sure? bring you back. Okay, all right. You can come back, but right. you can't play hockey anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, I think we could do better than that, but... 
So keep Burleson in left field? Yeah, exactly. I'd, I'd keep Burleson where he's as best DH. as a uh, left-handed compliment off the bench. Gorman at third? You okay with that? What about Walker at third? I, it's his natural position. Same Orlando with Gorman. Two. Well, the Gorman fisherman can play DH. And Jamie doesn't like that. He never Why? has. Why? I never really like that like fisherman Gorman. logo or jersey. No, the old fish sticks was not good. Hmm. Jamie Rivers of the New York Islanders? Yeah. Is that what we're talking about? New York mm-hmm. fish sticks. Yeah. yeah. The trillion dollar NFL owner. Yep. Yeah. Got a lot of money. Uh, so, yeah, it's a no for us. I won't spend a dime of it. No. Yeah, well, I spend mine, but I can spend it. <laughs> <laughs> How else do you think you make money, huh? <laughs> so you guys are not cool with that infield? No. I think it's a great infield. I don't, no. You think it's a great infield? Well, I mean, maybe Burleson not at first base, there but the go. rest of it Why I'm not? Cool I mean, he doesn't have to move around that much. I mean, that's, that's also true. In left field. Yeah, can we do better? Well, Jackson, uh, Jackson, <laughs> Jordan Walker is going to be in right field. What if he's at first base? Why are you getting rid of Goldie? He's 45 we're talking, we're at this point. The future. The future. He's 48 years old at this point. We've advanced <laughs> to the future. <laughs> so mad. What Sorry, if, Jamie. What if the future is now, guys? <laughs> now, if, like next year, you're able to win a World Series. Well, when Team Kans becomes Pedro Martinez. No. Oh. Sign me up. <laughs> now we're good. I'm yep. with you. When you're right, you're right, Anthony. <laughs> Thank you, Carrie. Yeah. Question number five. From the 618, why is Alexei Torpchenko not moved up to the third line? He's played third line. He's played third and fourth line all season long. Um, I think it just depends on what you're looking for. You no, know, Torp has had a really good season. I just I love the way he plays. I do. He's six six. He skates really fast. He drives the net. He's got 12 goals this year. He's a good penalty killer. Finishes his hits. He's a great dude, good teammate. I just think that his ceiling is third line. So when you move him up to the third line, you know, that's that's his ceiling, which means that sometimes when you play certain opponents, it may not be the best matchup, just certain times. But Drew Bannister and Craig Berube have used Alexei Torbchenko on the third line. Now, if your third line consists of Hayes, Sott, and Kapanen, and they're playing like they did last game against the Bruins, then he doesn't fit. But if they're inconsistent, which they have been, which is when Torpchenko's been moved up, you know, he's played well. So I think he's in a good spot. Like, if you're Alexei Torpchenko right now, you're a restricted free agent at the end of this season. You're with an organization that believes in you, that gives you a chance, that plays you in a lot of different situations. I think he's in a pretty good spot, man. Question number six. Nailed it delay on that one that's all right <laughs> i'm yeah. trying to sift through some of these questions you're doing a great job marsh well thank you uh we did somewhat have this conversation earlier but from the 217 who has had the best legal tampering period so far in the nfl uh i think the eagles have done a great job why won't you say you're atlanta falcons they got a quarterback you needed a quarterback more than anything yeah. You won't give your guys, your own guys. I think they did a good job. Credit. I, think they, I think they. I think they did. I. I th- here's here's what I think. I think Terry Fontenot thus far has has done the uh, has has made the easy choice on everything. Any fantasy football manager can draft two wide receivers, one masquerades as a tight end, a running back, and then pay Kirk Cousins, overpay Kirk Cousins for exactly what he wants and gives him a fourth year. I think any anybody could have done that. So I'm not going to sit here and talk about how the Falcons have done just a remarkable <laughs> job under a GM that thus far has not known how to build a roster. The easiest the easiest thing to do would, have, would be to sign Kirk Cousins, give him exactly what he was asking for. As opposed to drafting some uh, a quarterback of the future and having that that ability with the yeah, but pick. you don't know what you're getting with a quarterback you draft. You know exactly what you're getting with Kirk Cousins. That's right. You're gonna you're gonna be ten win team, eleven win team. You're gonna win the NF- NFC South, and you're gonna be in the and playoffs. You're gonna be bounced in the first round. Well, maybe. So, yeah, they 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 upgraded at the one spot they needed to. Yes. By- what, about, what about Tampa? 
You think Tampa did a pretty good job resigning think, Mike Evans, re, uh, franchising Antoine Winfield, I think resigning they did, yeah. I think that was Baker Mayfield. Did Bakey, Shaky Bakey, yeah. he's, he's official? He, yep. Yeah. What'd they give him? Three years and... One, let's see. 90, I think, or... One, one, three years, 100, I think. Three years, wow. 100? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Well, how much guaranteed? Uh, like 60. Hey, come on. 58, 68, something like that. I just don't agree with that side. Mm. It's your team, too. If it you're, like, you're going to overpay, how about this? I'll give the Falcons credit. They overpaid the right guy. How yeah, about that? like, what do you get overpay? I, Shaky Bakey had a good season, and apparently the guys really liked him, and he worked well with that system, and, you know, whatever. But, like, come on, man. 30 million. 50 year, million guaranteed. 50, okay, that's not terrible, but. Three years, 100 million. I just. That's uh, good money. That's, that's great money. I. What like I know I've asked this before, but where did the tier of quarterbacks go that make like fifteen million? Oh, those are way long gone. Like, They're gone. Daniel Jones is making forty million a year, right? Yeah, I know, yeah. but that, that, it's that, scary. That. It's insanity. Well, it's insanity. That's how the that's how the market works. <laughs> that's stupid. You start signing people, nobody's gonna settle for. I mean, a fifteen million is a backup. Hmm. Well, where else would Shaky Bakey have gone though? No, Minnesota. I, <laughs> I prefer quarterbacks that sign one-year deals worth ten million dollars. Yeah, all right, mm-hmm. where are you gonna find that at? On my team, baby. <laughs> How about Sam Darnold got ten million dollars? Yeah, Sammy, <laughs> absolutely. Sammy D. What? That's your new tier of fifteen. It's twisted. Unless they're throwing a football. <laughs> I should have. Seriously. All right. It's Fastlane on 101 ESPN. Is the future now for the Blues? And how difficult is it if you're Drew Bannister to try to? earn a job while also ensuring that the young guys are developing. That's next on 101 ESPN. Cheap, cheap, fun, fun. Let's get dirty. It's that time of year. St. Patty's Day is right around the corner. And the best spot for you to go to prepare for St. Patrick's Day or any event for that matter is Dirt Cheap. They are your one-stop party shop. They have all the best product at all the best prices. Dirt Cheap is about the price, not the product. They got the high-end spirits. They've got all the beer that you're looking for. They've got all the red wine, white wine, rosé, the bubblies, whatever you're looking for. Dirt Cheap has them, and they have them at great prices. Right now, there's special pricing on select sizes of Crown Royal, Captain Morgan, Jameson, Bailey's, of course, right? Luck of the Irish right there. Kendall Jackson Chardonnay, and they got the Black Box Premium Wines, three liters. All of that has got special pricing. All you got to do is stop by any location, for that matter, or download the Dirt Cheap app. Get on there. There's even more savings and deals and clubs and raffles that you can be a part of. And you don't even have to leave your home. You can be at work. You can order ahead, pick up the curbside to pick up where you get the spirits right there at the location or have it delivered to your home. You go home and sit there and enjoy your evening or St. Patty's Day or time with friends and family. Dirt Cheap is there for everything that you can want to host at your home or somewhere else. Either way, Dirt Cheap is the best in the business. So please go visit them today. Remember to have fun, but be careful out there.
for you. Time check is brought to you by Clarkson Jewelers, an officially licensed Rolex jeweler. By the way, at halftime, SLU is up on Rhode Island 41-31 in the first round of the A-10 champ in the right. A-10 conference tournament game. Uh, so SLU, if they hold on, they advance the second round. May, who knows? Maybe the Billikens, who have not had a, a, a strong season, maybe they can surprise Kerry. Maybe. Yeah, right. Let's see. And uh, didn't like the way that you just. I, I think they've been playing really well all season. I didn't feel your uh, confidence in that one, so yeah. we'll, we'll just move on. Go, Billikens. Here we go, Jamie. Nice. Yeah, is the future now? Right now, for <laughs> is the future now for the Blues with all these young guys coming up? Well, what do you mean by that? Like, is it time to just play the young guys? Yep. Yeah. Well, obviously they've got some guys that they've recalled here recently in in Bull Duke in Kessel, uh, Kessel. I. I I still wonder why he was sent down, apart from the numbers game and before the deadline and not losing guys. I get it. So uh, you you managed to to do it so you could keep your players, but he's back, and he deserves to be. He's a heck of a young player. He's a great young defenseman. I was talking to uh, Daniel Kachuk, who's their coach down in Springfield, and he just said, man, he, he's he's really good. Like He's, he's playing so good, and he's do dominating the American Hockey League, and we saw he can play top four minutes here in the NHL. So I, I like that. And then Zach Dean, we're yet to find out, you know, what he's going to bring to the table. But I know, and again, in talking to their head coach down in Springfield, said he's playing really, really well. He's finally really comfortable at the center ice position, and he's starting to put some points on the board. I think he's got seven points in his last 12 games, five of them being goals. So he's starting to produce. Uh, here's the sticking point for me, though. Here's, here's the, the conundrum, if you will. You have an interim head coach in Drew Bannister who is – coaching for his coaching life because if he doesn't win hockey games what would inspire the blues to hire him full-time and remove the interim tag nothing so then here's the push and the pull of it all mm -hmm. is you have to win games and you want a coach to win games and you're trying to get all of your veterans to buy in to compete and the accountability and all that but at the same time we're going to just play these young guys too now nothing says the young guys aren't good enough right now nothing mm -hmm. says bull duke has been fine you know it, it, could you argue that it, could you say that he's been better than maybe some of the veterans that are on the outside looking in right now i don't know if you could yeah you know um but matthew castle has proven he can play mm -hmm. he deserves his, his spot in the lineup zach dean i mean we'll see right like if these guys make you a better team great but if we're going for the full like youth experiment now and just like let's get them some experience because it doesn't really matter or or not that it doesn't matter or eh, you know we're <laughs> going to have a tough time making the playoffs anyways but then the head coach is sitting there kind of in a pickle because now how can he coach to win every game if you're just being you know there to develop the young guys that's fine at the American Hockey League level that's his job at the American Hockey League level they hope you can win some games but they all they care about is that you develop NHLers All right so I think that's the, the interesting scenario for for me is watching all of this kind of unfold, thinking about Drew Bannister and Steve Ott and Mike Weber, the entire coaching staff, everybody involved, because everybody right now is under the microscope, I would I would imagine. And you're maybe not fielding what you would consider to be the best team. But again, the rookies have to prove that they don't belong for me. So if the rookies play and they're playing over guys who are better than them, that's problematic. If the rookies go in and they play up to standard par as the veterans or even better, then it's it's a moot point. Then Drew Bannister just has to coach the best team that he has on 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 the bench mm -hmm. to win a hockey game. How do you guys feel though? Like it's an interesting situation, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I for me though, it's he 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 was call, he was called up from the AHL. So you should have that ability to get the most out of the young youngsters. Now you got to you got to kind of. But the youngsters have to be able to play, Anthony. What if they're not ready? And you have to vary your expectations because now they're playing at the NHL level. But ultimately, why do you have a coach behind the bench? You you want to that you want that coach to get the most out of the players, right? Whether whether it's scheme, style motivation whatever that's ultimately what the coach is doing correct it's supposed so, to be yeah so yeah you've had it you've had yeah you've had your opportunity <laughs> hasn't really gone great and this might be a little bit of a youth movement moving forward here not a full rebuild yeah, but, but a little what bit guaranteed as a coach have that going with the youth movement is in his best interest for professionally for himself how are the veterans done oh i understand the case but there's no guarantee that the young guys are are better 
there's no guarantee that the veterans are going to play hard for you. I know, but I, at least I have the back of a hockey card to look at and go that, you know, if I can get this guy going, if he finds his game, right? Mm-hmm. There's some you, young guys that just can't. There's no if yet. It's like, sure. okay, he's not ready. Yeah. If, if the guy's not ready, he's not ready. But if he's on my roster. Like, do you think ultimately you think right now Drew Bannister thinks that Zach Bolduke should be a second line player? No, I don't think so. But he's playing there. Right. Because you got veterans that, that aren't doing their jobs. Well, and, Or and, veterans that you're not playing. Yeah, I think. And why aren't you playing them? Because you want to get the youth in the lineup. Do you think that they're playing well, the veterans? No, but I, one could argue that they have the same offensive output or scoring chance ability as the guys that are in the lineup. But if I'm not seeing the results, at some point the results matter. Okay, but then what if the results don't change even with the young guys? Now you're in a full youth movement and sure. the result doesn't change. And I'm just saying that it's interesting. All roads lead back to that coach. And you can sit there and tell me all you want that it's his scheme and it's his job to get the most out of the players. Sure. If the players can't give the team what the team needs, then it's not really the coach's fault. If, you, if we're having a conversation about the coach and moving forward, I, I stand on what I'm saying. If we're having a conversation about whether or not the team is good enough or the roster is good enough, to me, that's a, that's a separate conversation. But then where's, the, where's the measuring stick on what the coaching staff can do at that point? Like, what are you evaluating the coaching staff on then? If you don't yeah. have the right roster with or without the young guys, it right. doesn't matter. What those, do you, those coaches are, are dead men walking. I know. And that's why I find it to be an interesting problem yeah. right now. The roster, if the roster isn't good enough, the construction of the roster, the the... the you know the players not get the players not performing, which is mm-hmm. Gary always one of your your biggest points. Then the coaches are dead men walking. There's nothing they can do. Understandable. However, you're still at the same time wanting your coach to try and bring his best every day as well. Sure. And you got a guy right now that's is navigating through the the difficult waters of a team that plays like they did in Boston, mm-hmm. and then a team that plays like they did against the Devils. And you're like, Woof. oh yeah, I I don't envy Drew Bannister at all. And if it were me, I'm breaking some bottles and I'm holding it to people's well, necks. And he kind of well, did yeah. that. Let's play, let's play better. He kind of did that in the best way he could as a coach. Is he skated them for like 45 minutes? Sure. Like he's doing he's doing all the things that yeah he's been asked to do. Like I said this the other day, is he was asked to come in and demand that there's a compete level, to, and he was asked to come in and hold guys accountable change the system defensively a little bit to minimize some of the scoring opportunities. He's done that. Mm-hmm. But still, the, the roster has not been able to provide the consistency that they need ultimately to make the playoffs. At least not yet. I mean, they're still mathematically there. They're in the hunt. Nobody's giving up, but they're not in a preferred spot. Let's just put it that way. So I find it hard to be an interim coach with an audition, and you're auditioning with you know, a group that now you're going to start tweaking and playing around with because certain young guys need to get some ice time and see what we have. Mm-hmm. I find that to be very difficult for the coach. Well, I think that what Anthony's saying is the older guys have shown enough that <laughs> it hasn't been good enough all season long. And so as an organization, you have to see what these younger players can do. And in the in the process of that, the person who gets the short end of the stick is the, the head coach. The head coach prior to him got the short end of the stick as well because the veteran players weren't playing, performing well. So Craig Berube lost his job because the, perform, the, the players weren't performing well. Drew Bannister might be in that same role because the players weren't performing well. And as an organization, at some point, Instead of beating my head on the wall and saying, okay, they'll figure it out. They'll figure it out. No, you know what? Let me see what these young guys have. So I know what I can ha- what I need to do come the offseason. Who do I need to move? Who can I trust? Mm-hmm. Because I've seen them play. If you never see them play, then you have no reason to trust or believe that they can do it. So I know. I mean, it, I, it, trust it's me. not fair. I understand right? it, how it works. It's not fair. But ultimately, it's tough then to evaluate the coaching staff. Well, I think the decision is probably already made in that regard. It which, might be. Which, again, is not fair. But, I mean, that's – I think Drew Bannister kind of knew that coming in. If I don't make it – if I'm unable to get this group of men who didn't do well enough for the previous coach who got fired mm-hmm. to kind of turn over a new leaf and become what they need to become to become a playoff team, then I probably won't be able to have this job for the foreseeable future. It's but probably – You could also argue that he's extracted more from this team than Craig Berube did this year. Is that because the players realize we got one guy fired – and we need to be better. Who knows, or right? Is it because who knows? It, it, it's tough to to tell exactly how it goes on. I just I look at it from again from the standpoint <laughs> of if you're truly evaluating your coaching staff, 
it, you can't just start to experiment and, and do things and then hold the coaching staff accountable at right. that point. You can hold them accountable to continue to be consistent in their message and their systems and the, you know, the accountability and all that. I don't, I don't, even though they fired Craig Berube, I don't think that was so much on Craig Berube. Like, I think that was a message to the players, like, mm-hmm. you all aren't listening. And I think it would be the same thing if it happened to Drew Bannister. Okay, it's but not, then, so, I don't think it's fair. So full stop right there? Yeah. So if the team does the same kind of things to Drew Bannister, does Army pivot and not fire the coaches and just simply focus on tweaking the roster? You have to. I, I believe that to be true, but mm-hmm. then wouldn't firing Drew Bannister or not keeping him, maybe wouldn't that do, be counterproductive to the process? But wouldn't it be counterproductive? It would, yeah, because Drew Bannister has built a rapport with these players now, and you have to look at who else is out there that could, you would bring in your third coach within, what, two years? And now you would have to have that guy galvanize this group. Maybe he could, maybe he couldn't. And the young guys that Drew Bannister has worked with and yeah, developed, they, he already all knows those them. guys that are coming up right now are they Drew Bannister players. Right. So... You know, there is a connection there. The, only, the name that people throw out there all the time is Joel Quenville's out there. Joel Quenville has a lot of work to do before the NHL is going to allow him to be a coach again. Right. If ever. Wow. Do I think that's necessarily fair? Look, that's a whole other discussion for another day. Mm-hmm. But what else are you getting out there that could be so much better? Don't don't tell me Claude Julian. Don't tell me Alain Vigneault. Don't tell me all these recycled old guys who just don't have any connection to this team whatsoever as far as the roster that sits here currently. I don't think that's productive. So ultimately, I just go back to the original question. It's just not a question, more statement of when you start tweaking the roster, it's obviously more difficult to evaluate the coaching staff at that point. Sure. I, uh, Jamie, I completely I agree with that. I do. There is a job to be done, though. You know, and and I think I, he is doing the job. All right. Do you think he should? I think Drew Bannister is the right guy for the job. Okay. I really do. I think that his knowledge of the game, the way he's handled things, he's got a very calm demeanor, but he's very demanding at the same time. Mm-hmm. And there's never a I don't know when there's a problem or something. He knows, and he talks about it, and he addresses it. And I just think that consistency is important, especially when you're in a retool. You want a, a guy that's going to be a consistent voice with what he's teaching. And it started in the American Hockey League with a lot of these guys. And more of those guys are coming up, by the way. More of them are, are going to make their way to the NHL, including your draft picks that hopefully are going to try and find their way to the NHL here soon. I just don't know if there's an old guy out there or some young budding coach that has done more to justify just moving on again. We got an interesting text here to add another layer to this conversation. If we're going to lose anyway, you need to play the vets and not expose our future to a losing culture and shatter their confidence <laughs> because we're making them play and they're clearly not ready. What do you guys think about that? Well, they that is a thought process for some teams. Some teams will not call up players at the end of a season, will not bring players in when it's a losing culture. When things are frustrating, when players aren't on their best game, they'll just ride it out with their guys because they don't want to have those young guys, their first experience in the NHL, mm-hmm. be that of negativity and mm-hmm. then maybe frustration and confidence breaking rather than building. So there is that thought process out there as well. I don't know if that's Army's thought process. I haven't talked to him about it, and I doubt he would tell me anyways. There you go. All right. It's Fastlane on 101 at ESPN. Looks like the there's two outfielders that, with everybody banged up, there's two outfielders that are making their case to be opening day starters. We'll tell you who they are next on 101 ESPN. Performance. They are your one-stop shop for all aftermarket accessories. They are known for their top quality work and customer service as well. They're also known for their 25,000 square foot facility that houses the largest showroom in the area where you can find anything and everything you might need for your vehicle. Maybe it's a Jeep, maybe it's a pickup truck, maybe it's an SUV, maybe even a minivan. Whatever you're driving, Pure Performance is going to be able to accessorize that and make it look incredible. All you have to do, too, is get over to the showroom, which is located in St. Peter's, 
When you walk in, ask for Shelby. She's the sheriff over there. Tell her that Jamie Rivers sent you in. She's going to ask you about your vehicle, your budget, and what you're trying to do. And that's where they work their magic right there, is they find all the best accessories for your vehicle within your budget. And the technicians, once they get a hold of your vehicle, they change it forever. You'll pick that vehicle up, and you will be amazed at how amazing it looks. And while you're in there, too, it's a full-service garage. So if you need anything else addressed on your vehicle, their technicians can take care of you, and they always do. And they care about the customers and the customer satisfaction. So please get over there, check it out. You will absolutely love it. If not, check them out online at pureperformance.com. That's pure, P-U-R, performance.com. Carrie didn't believe enough. Rhode Island has opened a 17 to 4 run lead in the second half, and they have uh, taken the lead against SLU 49 45 at the 13 minute mark of so what, the second half. What's SLU's record this year? Oh, they're uh, a solid 12 and 19. <laughs> so, is there a possibility that this was going to happen either way? Well, Kerry, here's here here are my we'll thoughts. We'll never know because you didn't believe. <laughs> Thank you, Marsh. <laughs> you kind of you kind of uh, jumped the gun. You, you you got through the crap and you just said it how it was, which I appreciate. Well, I uh, I just I mean, okay. Look, they beat Rhode Island earlier this year at Rhode Island, ninety four ninety one. It's still time. And that's what makes this so much it's it's harder. frustrating. Yeah. Right? Yep. See, Rhode Island's also twelve and nineteen, Kerry. <sighs> I'm just saying, if you, Marsh, and I think you follow me on this. Mm-hmm. If you look at the sequence of events, <laughs> I had said, man, Slew's rolling at the half 41-32. Maybe they could make some noise in the A-10 tournament. I don't, I don't think to they can make Kerry any To which Kerry goes, okay. And I like completely <laughs> annihilated the Billiken's <laughs> chance to not only make a run in the A-10, but even win this game now. I can't believe you do that to uh, Matthew Rocchio. I'm sorry, Rock. Love you, but I, I don't. I don't. I, Twelve and nineteen is not a great record, and one should probably not expect 
a hey, long run in, they're all, in any you're, tournament. They're all 0-0 going no, into the no, tournament. No, 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 you're, you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're 12 and 19. <laughs> no, I mean, like Mizzou <laughs> has a chance. Yeah, no, Mizzou doesn't have a chance. What are you talking they, about? They're, they're, they're in zero the tournament. Zero. They're in the SEC tournament, but they don't have a chance. Hey, now is, a good, <laughs> <laughs> now is as good a time as ever. To get your first conference listen, win. Listen, I know we talk about just get in and anything is possible. This yeah. is impossible for Mizzou. What? Well, they got in. <laughs> everybody gets in, Anthony. <laughs> what the hell are you talking you didn't about? Have to mention that, we all know well, that. Well, no, may, they may not know. <laughs> we may, we made it. <laughs> Could you have to contractually obligated to make it? All right, all right. Yeah, Settle yourself sorry. down, Billikins. Slews up fifty-two, fifty-one Tigers? now. See, now there that we now that we talk more passionately, yep. things are starting to change. When's uh, Illinois play? <laughs> Illinois we might have the double buy. I don't know. We're you know we're we're one of the top twelve teams. Oh in the yeah, you're the mm-hmm. best. We might have um, we might have yeah. the double too buy much in time the, off. In the Big though, Ten. I think that's what it's might possible. happen. Uh, who knows? We got to make it out of the second round at one point in the next. I don't know four or five. Illinois. Years. Let's see if they play on Friday. Uh, they do. They play on Friday. TBD. Yeah, in the we got a buy. Quarterfinal. Mm. We got a buy. You know yeah. why? Because we're good. Mm. I'd be scared of that TBD team. Don't worry about it. Typically pretty good, mm-hmm. especially this time of year. Nah, you worry about it. Mm-hmm. They're okay. All right. <laughs> Speaking of okay, <laughs> according to Derek Gould in a race for opening day in the Cardinals outfielder, outfield, it's Alec Burleson and Victor Scott setting the pace. Mm. Those two guys setting the mm. pace, guys. That's problematic. I've said it. Mm. If the Cardinals, and this is. This is going to sound like I'm against uh, Alec Burleson. You are. You have been all, all season. Thank you. But if the Cardinals choose Alec Burleson over Victor Scott and send Victor Scott down, um, I'm going to go banana sandwich on these airwaves. You should. Have you ever had a banana sandwich, Anthony? Banana and peanut butter peanut sandwich. Oh, I feel like you'd really eat elite. Oh, Out of yeah. all the They're people awesome. in this room, I think you'd like the banana sandwich. Well, yeah, Jamie, you cut them up. You cut up the, the banana. You yeah. cut up the banana. Yeah. You put the peanut butter on there. Uh-huh. You put the slices of banana on the uh, on the peanut butter. It's, yeah. actually, it's incredible. It is delightful. That's what I'm saying. You're yeah. a big fan. Certainly. I don't blame you. Gary likes it, too. I do. You can't eat too many of them, though. Yeah. It's... Oh, come on. <sighs> Not good for me. Well, really as many as you can get your hands on. Yeah, yeah, that. Hey, we got a question from the 636. Hey, 636. 616. Uh, more of a uh, this or that type of question. Uh, Mizzou gets a win in the SEC tournament, or the Cardinals starting outfield consists of Edmund, Newt, and Walker by May? The, the latter. You said Mizzou gets a uh, Win gets in a the, win in the SEC tournament. Yes. Yeah. No. Oh, Mizzou basketball. They haven't no. beaten an SEC team no. yet this year. Have they? All right. Slow down. Slow down. Football let's football for a second. Let's, no, talk, let's just talk this out. Yeah. Football. They'd be fine. But they Basket- haven't won an SEC game yet. What's their record? Like eight and twenty. Nobody knows. Hey, we even keep up with it. We haven't talked about Mizzou basketball all year. <laughs> There's a reason. For that. <laughs> I'll I'll say Mizzou gets their uh, gets their first win. What? I say Mizzou gets a win. Based off of what? Who Based are they playing? They playing, are they playing Georgia. Georgia? Georgia's a football program. Mm-hmm. Now so is Mizzou. Mizzou is now as well. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I say that I think there's a better chance that Mizzou wins tomorrow, tomorrow night in the SEC tournament than the Cardinals have their healthy outfield by May. I don't, I don't know, Anthony. Jamie? We all know what Kerry's going with. What, what, what? what says you, Jamie? Eight and twenty-three. My apologies for the three losses I didn't give them. Hmm. For said, Mizzou? I said, yeah, I said eight oh, and twenty. Boy. Eight and twenty-three. Oh, eight boy. and twenty-three. What's your than question, Anthony? Twenty-eight to three. So <laughs> Mizzou gets their first. Mizzou gets a win a in the SEC in the tournament. SEC tournament. <laughs> okay. Or the Cardinals have their starting outfield, so Tommy Edmond, Newt, and Walker in place by May first. You said May first, right? Yeah, by May. First, yeah. I'm going to go with the Cardinals on this one. Okay. I think they'll have their guys back in place. I, Mizzou plays Georgia next, don't they? Yes. Yeah. They yeah, play tomorrow done. night they're against done. Georgia. And then they're out of the tournament, right? Correct. Then yeah. They're out this so season. We should over. probably be rooting for Mizzou to lose I am, so oh. the Cardinal thing happens. I, was, uh, I thought you were going to say I was rooting for Mizzou. 
No, they don't get a high draft pick. <laughs> no, no, don't work that way. Uh, uh, no. Marsh, what, what about you? So these, these two are going with the Cardinals being healthy. He, he's going with the Cardinals. Which is just ridiculous. I mean, it's is it more ridiculous than them winning a game in the I SEC? think Mizzou might win. Mizzou's due. They're due. Oh, it's the due factor. Tommy Edmond hasn't been able to swing a bat mm-hmm. yet. You don't mm-hmm. think by May he'll be able to pick up a bat and swing it? He might be able to swing a bat in Memphis for a, a week. Yeah, but it's still a better chance than Mizzou beating Georgia. Do you guys know what happens <laughs> in the month of March? <laughs> Cinderella's come alive. That's where they find their slipper. <sighs> Mizzou doesn't even And we were all shoes. born. In the month we were born. We were. If you don't believe in that. Some would say we're Cinderella's. All of us. Joe Vitale will join us next here on <laughs> Our beautiful feet in the glass slippers. <laughs> That's correct. Uh, yeah. It's so hot. Yeah, Joe, Joe's going to join us next. Joe will know all about it. Absolutely. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. They know how exciting the NBA is. They know that we love the NBA. They have all the games and so many prop bets available. It really is exciting. And that's why if you're not currently a customer, you have to sign up because new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That again is two hundred bucks if your bet wins. Yeah, Jamie, all you can do, all you have to do, is bet on the NBA with a wide range of bet types, including quick bets, live same game parlays, player props, and much more. Maybe you want to take former Mizzou basketball player Michael Porter Jr. Yeah. over in threes. He may do it. I don't know the Mizzou Tigers will, but it's possible. Jokic over in rebounds. He didn't play for Mizzou. He didn't, but you know. His teammate did. So these are all some of the player props that you can choose when you're dealing with FanDuel. Just visit FanDuel.com slash fast to make your first bet a layup. And you can do that at FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Again, FanDuel.com slash fast. Must be 21 or older and present in Illinois. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER.
101 ESPN Sports Center. I'm Andrew Marsh. It's time for a Sports Center update. Brought to you by Saliga Heating and Cooling. The Blues beat the Boston Bruins last night by a final score of 5-1. to one. They'll take on the Los Angeles Kings tomorrow. Pre-game starts at 5.30. Puck drop is at 6.30. And we're going to be joined by Joe Vitale coming up next right here in the Fast Lane. We'll break down last night's game and talk about the Blues and Kings tomorrow night. That's coming your way next right here in the Fast Lane. I'm Andrew Marsh, and this Sports Center update is brought to you by Saliga. Heating and cooling. Independent American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning Dealer. a little differently. Just imagine how he looks at hockey. Whoa. This is The View from Vitaly, brought to you by Scott Lee Heating Company, a proud Mitsubishi Electric Elite contractor. It's Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. The Blues get it done last night. I guess the Bruins 5-1. to one. Joining us right now to talk about it, it's our guy Joe Vitale for you, the 101 ESPN Celebrity Line. What's up, Joe? What's up, boys? Doing great. How are you doing all today? Well, we're doing great. Man, Blues look great last night. So, um, you know, just tell us why they played great last night and not uh, all the time. Just a simple question to start things off. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, listen, Stoltz, if I, if I had the answer to that, I would be a coach. and I wouldn't be calling and talking to you fine folks every week, which I would not want. <laughs> I wouldn't want that. I, w- I wouldn't want that. I love, I love what I do, and I love talking to you guys every week. So uh, I take pride in the fact that I don't know. Um, you know, I tell you what, last night's game was it was a great game. And you know what, it's just a, it's a funny game where certain nights you, you get bounces and certain nights you just don't. You know, I look at that opening goal last night for Casper Captain, a, a rim putt by Tory Crew goes right off of the Zamboni door, right to the front of the slot. You know what, a bounce goes your way. Let's look at the game before that. New York Rangers. I think the Blues played similar in the first period of the Rangers game as they did the Bruins game. And then what happened in the Rangers game? A shot from the outside gets double tipped off the Colton Franco's shaft and it goes in the net. So, you know, it's just sometimes sometimes you play well and you don't get what you deserve and sometimes you, you don't play very well and you get lucky. And I think the St. Louis Blues over the last two games, you know, they got shut out in the one game versus the Rangers and of course they win and prevail last night against the Boston Bruins. I think a similar first period. I think fortunately for them last night, they just got the bounces early on and, and they stuck with it. Joe, a lot of young guys getting called up here now. Zach Dean officially on the roster. Zach Bolduke, Matthew Kessel. You know, what do you think the plan is ultimately here with these guys for the Blues? You know, Riz, I think, I think what they're going to do is they're going to get these kids 8, 10, 12 games, maybe like 15 if you're Bull Duke, maybe 8 if you're Dean. And I think that ideally what you want to do for a young kid like that in, in a season like this for the Blues where, you know, you're looking to salvage something. And to me, what you're salvaging is is you're getting young kids that NHL experience. You know, what does it mean to have 8 games? Well, it means a lot for a young player who's never done it before. You know, that feeling of going into camp next year, come September, you know, it's a different feeling for a player who has never played the NHL game versus a player who's played, you know, 10 to 12. And not to mention that, just the experience in itself to give them confidence. But I think that the summer, you head into a summer where you played 10 NHL games, again, the confidence, the swagger, you know what it's like up there, you know what it takes, you know what the expectation is. And I think that that kind of evolves into becoming that preparation uh, model for you in the summertime, which is the push that you definitely want. Uh, and you got to give them a taste of it, and, and hopefully they get enough taste where they want to stay there and they know what it takes to stay there. And to me, that's what I'm looking at when you look at players like Dean and, and Bull Duke. Joey, I wanted to get your opinion on this team. When they score first, it seems like the confidence level goes through the roof. And, and when they don't score first, it feels like they're, they're just kind of moving at a slower pace. Are you seeing that? And if so, what, what do you think is the cause of that? Well, I mean, it's a characteristic of this team that I think they, they're they trying to identify and, and pride themselves on the defensive side. You know, this has been the issue going back to last season. It was the biggest issue that they needed to correct into the off season here, uh, Kerry. And now that you head into the season, you know, it's been the focus. Now, when you have the lead, you can really dial into the focus of defensive hockey. When you don't have the lead, you still have to be good defensively and you have to figure out a way to offensively get back in the game. So it, it does not to say complicate things, but it does bring a whole other uh, element 
to this team right now that is, is not doing great as far as an offensive standpoint goes. They're not getting the offensive numbers they were hoping for. So when you, fall, when you fall, find yourself behind, I think that the psyche of this team is it, it's going to take a lot to come back, and sometimes it could be a little overwhelming, you get a little exhausted, and ultimately um, that record kind of proves itself that this team really does thrive when they score first. So that's where Drew, Drew Bannister has continued to make it so paramount that they start early, start on time, and hopefully get the bounce early in the game because the record does show that when they do that, they they tend to prevail more times than not. Joe, secondary scoring has been a big topic this year with the Blues, and they got that. Last game against the Bruins, they get three goals from Hayes, Saad, and Kapanen. For those those three guys in particular, one, a couple of those guys really needed that. But two, you know, what, what did you see from that line that was a little bit different than what's been going on recently? Well, I, you know, Riz, we talked about the, the bounce early in the game, and I think that for Kapanen, that's kind of what he needed. You know, you know the feeling of, you know, being in a rut, and all of a sudden you get a, you get a fortunate bounce like Kapanen did in that first period as it goes off the Zamboni door right in front to him. You get a goal, and all of a sudden you just got this goal energy. You just got the juices going. You could take a minute and a half shift to come off. You're not even tired. You want to go right back out there. I mean, I think that's that kind of goal energy and goal um, tenacity that, you know, you're hoping for. And I think Kapanen really proved that. You know, I think that, you know, for this line to have success is, is really important because, you know, those other two lines are going to get very tough matchups, especially on the road. Uh, but I like the way Kapanen skated. I thought he was jumping in on the forecheck. I thought they were patient. I thought they were poised. To me, Kevin Hayes does very well against former teams and former towns he's been a part of. We saw him score there against the Philadelphia Flyers earlier in that road trip. He was a part of that organization for four years. And then going back to his hometown of the Boston, Massachusetts, there's just this rhythm and this very confident nature about the captain or the, uh, the centerman in that line and Kevin Hayes. And, you know, the centerman drives the line. I thought he was really, really calm with the puck. He looked very comfortable, almost like he was just enjoying himself and having a lot of fun out there. And when you're doing that and you're in that type of rhythm, you're going to have success and your line mates are going to have success with you. Joe, good stuff, man. We'll, uh, we'll check back with you again next week. Hey, sounds great, boys. You guys have a great week now. All right, you too. Thanks. Too. That's Joe Vitale here in the Fast Lane on 101 ESPN. When we come back, we've got Bet the Board, three stars of the day, criticisms, compliments, next. Are you thinking about selling your home here soon? Or maybe you are trying to sell your home and you just, maybe you're not selling it quick enough. Well, that's why you need to call Gloria Lou with your home sold guaranteed realty. Uh, Gloria is the best in the business, and she's been doing it for so long now that she knows exactly when the market's hot. She knows exactly what the price should be, and she knows exactly how to get you to the closing table, which is so important. Well, she has great options, too, available for you, whether it's a cash offer or you know, other offers that are in place. Well, she also has guaranteed sales. That's my favorite one. That's where Gloria sits down with the home seller, agrees upon the sales price, and then sells the home for that price, or she buys it herself. And she guarantees all of that in handwriting. And why is she so confident? Because she has thousands of buyers in her database that are ready, willing, and able to purchase your home. That drives all the traffic to your listing, hopefully multiple offers, and ultimately more money in your pocket at the end of it all. And here's what you have to do to get that great service is just call her. Call her. Tell Jamie River sent you in. Her number is 314-325-6888. Again, it's 314-325-6888. Or you can visit GloriaHasTheBuyers.com. Conditions do apply. Gloria and the seller must agree upon the sales price and possession date.
Hey, it's Carrie, and with the weather changing, March is a critical time to check your home's windows. If yours are cracked or leaking, or they won't open or stay open, then it's time to call the pros at Window Nation right now. For every two windows you buy, you'll get two free windows. There's no limit to how much you can save. Plus, you can save even more with zero down, zero interest, and no payments for 24 months. Window Nation's windows come with a lifetime warranty and can be installed in less than one day. With proven quality and service, it's no wonder thousands of home homeowners have trusted Window Nation with their homes, and you can too. So if your old finicky windows and high energy costs from the winter are cutting into your finances, don't miss out. With an unlimited buy two, get two free, plus zero down, zero interest, and make zero payments for 24 months. Months. You cannot afford to wait. Plus, you get a house of windows and you can get two free Cardinals tickets. It's easy. Just call 866 nation or visit them online at windownation.com to schedule your free in-home estimate. That's 866 nation or online at windownation.com. This is Fastlane on 101 ESPN. If you miss anything from today's show, you can always download the podcast available at 101ESPN.com, your 101 ESPN mobile app. It's brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Don't forget about Bracket Madness with Selection Sunday almost here. You can get signed up to play this year's Bracket Madness Pick'em Challenge. Register right there at 101ESPN.com. It's free to enter, and this year's top score will take home a $250 Amazon gift card and a 101 ESPN prize pack. See the contest rules and sign up to play in bracket madness now at 101 espn.com it's all brought to you by bud light and twin peaks time for bet the board marsh you got the latest standings kit i certainly do anthony you are leading the charge five and two on the month of march 
Uh, I am nice. four and three. Carrie and Jamie are tied at two and five. Got a win oh. last night. Well. Yes. I'm on my way, fellas. There you go. Uh, I took Gonzaga last night to cover, and I'm going to go right back to the well tonight. They're playing in the WCC Championship. Tip off at 8 o'clock. We got the coverage for you on 101 ESPN. They're playing St. Mary's. Give me Gonzaga, minus three and a half. The Bulldogs. Hmm. Oh, boy. I'm looking at the NHL right now, but I kind of want to look at the NBA. What do you think, Harry? <laughs> the Warriors aren't playing tonight, so. No, but the Clippers are. God, They're playing the Minnesota Timberwolves without uh, Carl Anthony Towns. This guy, huh? Give me the Clippers. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this guy. He does it again. All right. Well, Give me now. the Clippers. Uh, do I want to do the spread or do I want it to do the money line? I'll have to do the spread. Yeah. Minus six and a half for the Clippers. Yeah. I hope they win by five. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I don't blame them. I'll take the New York Key. Knicks minus six <laughs> over the 76ers at home. All right. Didn't want it, but I'll take it. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to go with the Detroit Red Wings over the Buffalo Sabres. They're at plus 110. The Red Wings have not been great recently. They're right there tied with the Islanders for the second wild card spot. They need a big game tonight. Patrick Kane from Buffalo. You know, mm. you're feeling it. Yep. No, okay. sure am. There you have it. There's Beth the board. Marsh, what do we got for three stars of the day? Ooh, do we want to get into some criticisms and compliments first? Yeah, that's what I meant. So we have one from the 618. CD, you're doing a great job in the new slot. Oh, yeah, you are. Well you. done, CD. Boy, Carrie filled the slot well. Carrie, Carrie, <laughs> Carrie, <laughs> Carrie. Appreciate it. From the 910, how in the hell is Anthony a Falcons fan? Isn't he from Michigan? And the Panthers do have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> the Panthers do have a plan for the offensive line. They are following the Saints model when they had Breeze massive at the guard and center position. Trying to stop the rush up the middle. Burns wasn't worth the contract he got. I live in North Carolina now. All right. There you go. You from Michigan? <clears throat> Maybe. All right. Um, We're not sure. <laughs> I'm a Falcon fan because of Dion. Dion, Dion. Good yeah. reason. Been a while. It's no, been a while. I stuck no with the team. Championships in that time. No, man. no, no. Well, You're NFC South fan. champions. No, that doesn't count. I know one cares about that. Hmm. I'm sorry. You know, if you showed up uh, to hurt me, <laughs> congratulations, Gary. You have. But yeah, I'm a Dion fan. Got a text from 636. Loved having a full show today. You guys are the best. Also, RIP the Vikings. Oh. 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 To... By the way, Daniil Hunter signed a two-year contract with the Eagles. So the oh, Eagles continue to rolling. add. The Vikings continue to subtract. Trying to hurt my feelings, I see. <laughs> I just came over the uh, the old phone there. I got the alert, and I thought, you know, I should mention this for my guy, Marshy. Well, I appreciate it. Well, let's get to our three stars of the day. Our third star of the day was going to be Mizzou basketball because of all the hope that <laughs> Anthony and I have, of course, for that yes. team. However... The St. Louis Billikens have made their way back into this hey. game. They are our third star of the day, 68-67 as I look on the screen. They could be losing now as I say this. No, they're winning. 71-69. They there we go. There we go. So they are our third star of the day. 17 seconds left. Good job. Our Arlet. second star of the day is Pedro Martinez. Yeah, yeah. Pedro. Oh, all right. Slash yeah. Tink Hints. Slash yeah. Tink Hints. Yes. Yeah, also have known as. Mm -hmm. Have to listen to the podcast for that one, <laughs> that reference. <laughs> and our first star of the day goes to the St. Louis Riverboat Gamblers. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie's NFL team. Yep. There you have it. All right, boys, <laughs> they'll do it for us tonight. We'll be back tomorrow at 2 o'clock. West Coast Championship. Don't forget tip-off at 8 o'clock tonight. Pre-game at 745. We have instant replay coming up at 6 o'clock. For Andrew Marsh, for Kerry Davis, for Jamie Rivers, I'm Anthony Stoltz. We appreciate everybody listening, tuned in, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow right here at 2 o'clock. See ya!